bunch of pictures. Bingo comes in. Nobody to the six, near side now. Facebook, Facebook, JT's going to get it. No, they toss the it back to Johnson. Johnson's um, got to get to the outside. Now cuts back inside. There goes Jalen. 50. Now 40 goes Jalen. 30. 20. They're not going to get him. He pulls up. Goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. Touchdown. Things we talked about when we had the opportunity to speak with defensive coordinator Josh Mercer. Uh, you saw the emotion that he had in it. Tell me a little about that. I tell you, when <laughs> when you mentioned uh, Walker, I mean, his face just lit up. I mean, what a what an exciting, you know, jamboree last week he had, especially in the first 15 minutes. And he was, his coach was excited about it. Of course, he was pumped up about his, his, his team. Uh, a lot of gang tackling last week. A lot of... Uh, very few solo tackles, a lot of assisted tackles. So I mean, they were they were following the ball and they were going getting after. Him. And boy, he was excited. I tell you what, I, I'd like to play for for a coach that gets that excited. Again, reminder: this game, if you are tuning in live, it is tape delayed. We will have the audio only tonight. Uh, that is due to the restrictions put on here by Karen Crow. But we are delighted to be in the the press box that is getting a facelift up here. Uh, but the the friendliness is not. It's been the same throughout the years that we've been around this Karen Crow organization. Just a great bunch of guys any time that we make the trip down I-49. And, uh, you know, we talked to, to Coach a lot of it a little bit earlier. He drives the, the bus down for him and all that, and he said it's difficult getting a trip down here without stopping by Cafe Josephine. And uh, and we certainly echo those sentiments as well. You haven't made that trip, though. I have not. Uh, a good friend of mine told me about it, so the Marlene and I plan on going. We just hadn't made it. Last time we came down to the steamboat, and then next time we plan on making Cafe Josephine. Well, if you are looking around the area here, as we sit on the home side of the field, you see the Trojans warming up. They are in all white tonight. They have the purple block letters with the gold trim. They have their white helmets with the Ash Trojan logo atop that, all adorned in white shoes in there. The quarterback's getting loose, getting it out to the receivers, and Amingo able to grab one of those there. The offensive lines, the defensive lines are getting going as well. To our left side, you'll see the Bears of Karen Crow. They are in gold pants with the navy tops, those gold letters trimmed, uh, we believe as well. My old eyes can't see, but it looks like they are trimmed in white. Again, at the 50-yard line, there is a navy blue state of Louisiana with that Chicago Bear-esque C in the middle of it. Uh, good fan support making their way down the interstate from Alexandria on here. But, Coach, uh, this is opening day. I know you've been a lot, spent a lot of time on the soccer field. You did play in high school. What uh, at football in high school? Tell me about game one. I know you had the jamboree, but here we are at game one. I tell you, in football, you're just you're ready to hit somebody else. So last week they got to do it a little bit, but this time you get to do it 48 minutes. I mean, it's somebody you, you, you've planned for this. You, you know, they were talking last night about how, how they started – you know, kind of getting a little frustrated with each other, you know, in camp. But uh, but they made it through it, and I'll tell you what, this is – and you couldn't have picked a better, a better opponent to start with. Uh, field conditions are a lot different than last year. You know? oh my, yeah, you went back and watched that game <laughs> from last year. And so it was great all day, and not, far, not long before the game, it started raining. And uh, the old slogan, when it rains, it pours, it did – Karen Crow jumps out to a 21 to nothing lead on the Trojans, and it was uh, it was tough sledding, if you will, from there. <laughs> Tell you a fast track. We walked across the field. Um, obviously, it's dry because we haven't you know had a lot of rain here, but shouldn't be any problems with the field. Like I said, with these two teams with athleticism on this field, there's it's it's going to be a track meet. Uh, hopefully, you know Ash can contain them, and uh, you know the Trojans can contain them, and uh, really really looking forward to seeing all the athletes on the field tonight. You'll get a chance to see two first-year starters at quarterback for their schools. Of course, Ty Feaster transferred down, and he is starting for the Trojans, but is no uh, no stranger to starting at quarterback and pulling the trigger, and that is Ty Feaster, the senior. For Karen Crow, this is a young man that is only a sophomore, 1,000 yards receiving last year. Didn't see a lot of them in the game that was the Mud Bowl that we played in last year. But uh, Chance Babineau, they have him listed on their roster as an athlete. And boy, is he. He'll play quarterback, strong safety, free safety, both sides of the ball. Holds an offer from D1 Michigan out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. You guessed it. The Wolverines have already offered Chance Babineau the sophomore. What do you think about that? Oh, I, I mean, he was punting. He was punting, Doug. He was actually warming up as a punter as well. Uh, watched very few highlights from the from the jamboree in a, a scrimmage earlier. 
And I tell you what, you have to keep your eye on him every time he has the ball in his hands. Because if you blink, he's gone. And he's patient as well. He's very patient, lets everything. He sees the field really well, and he makes plays happen. Watching a lot of the, the warm-up plays, they've got things that get the ball out of Babineau's hands quickly. They see the pressure. Tell me about the pressure from that defense of the Trojans one week ago today. I tell you, I, it was phenomenal. I mean, they, they shot the gaps. I mean, they, they, the game plan was, was, you know, pretty straightforward, you know, with the offense that, that Powell runs where, you know, Karen Crow, they line up in the, in, in, the, in the running formation. They will get in the gun a, a little bit. But I'll tell you, the patience that they had last week with a little misdirection and just the size and just the getting up the field, the shooting the gaps, I'll tell you what, I was, I was excited to see that. And I really think that uh, – Really think they're, you're going to see some big things tonight and this, this year from this Trojan defense. So last season in this Karen Crow game, we saw what was a, a muddy quagmire of a slobber knocker, if you will. And uh, this year, you said it, fast track. These athletes are going to be able to get up and down the field. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I will say this. Um, the thing that there's, they have a, a really good middle linebacker that's out this, this evening, you know, for Karen Crow. Number twenty, he um, and he, he's in concussion protocol. Jamar Dennis, Jamar that's Dennis. right, yes. and he was everywhere on the film that we watched. Yeah, the two, the two scrimmage or the scrimmage in the jamboree. I mean, he was everywhere. So, um, I mean, I'm Karen Crow's a bunch of athletes. So I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna rec you know handle that well. But uh, but but other than that, I mean, it is just amazing the speed that you will see on this field tonight. And, and also, they get off the ball. Karen Crow gets off the ball. Their offense line gets off the ball. It'll be a good test for. For, for the Trojan defense, but uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. Well, they come in the ninth-ranked team in 5A in early preseason polls, which you know what our thoughts are about <laughs> preseason polls. Yeah. That uh, not worth a lot. Another Karen Crow Bear that has the white jersey on is number 12, Antoine Alexander, his backup quarterback, outside linebacker. They list him the junior, 5'11 and 180. So he is there, uh, has the leg brace on. So that's a couple of the – Bears that will not be in action tonight. What is in action tonight is our sponsors. We could not do anything without them. We're going to step away for our first break of the night. We're going to take a couple of minute commercial. When we come back, we'll get into our key. Co Coach, do you think you're ready for your keys to the game? They were spot on last week. Phenomenal. So the pressure is on you. Want to know, but that record goes away because that was a jamboree. Fresh start for you tonight. Do you think you're up to the challenge? Yes, sir. I'm ready to go. All right. Well, let's get into that break right now. We'll see about those keys to the game. They're brought to you by Why Not Style. We'll do that when we come back. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Appliance Parts Company in Alexandria has all your major appliance parts needs. We sell parts to all major appliances as well as new appliances, including window units, chest, and upright freezers. Appliance Parts originally opened its doors on Lee Street in 1972, and we're now open at a new location on Memorial Drive to serve you better. Stop by, say hey to our crew, and check out our awesome holiday gifts. Appliance Parts, 2208 Memorial Drive in Alexandria next to Target. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday from 9 till 12. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sport. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. 
And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having... And we are back here in Karen Crow, Louisiana, the Crow Dome. Doug Ann alongside of Nick Magnano. Got uh, Brett Stahls be producing tonight. And Chuck is back with us tonight. Chuck Perkins is there only on camera. You're welcome for all of that. He does not have a microphone tonight, so uh, you're, you're welcome for all of that. Uh, Going to be a great night. We set you up early for the keys to the game. They are presented to you from Why Not Stop. We'll get into that in just a moment. But one of the things that you want to look out for, we will name our Southern Air Heating and Cooling Cool play of the game. Did you see what they did? How the marketing, whatever. Did you see that they've got a cool game of the week now that they've sponsored? How about that? I'll tell you what. They, <laughs> I'm sure they've had some business this, this past couple of months. And, uh, and yeah, they do a great job. They, took, the they took our play and moved it over <laughs> to a game of the week, too. I need, I need a royalty check over there because one of our uh, – one of our employees on the Tioga call works for that organization now that I saw the commercial on it, so we'll, uh, we'll want to check out that. But uh, starting this Sunday, that is two days from today, Friday, Saturday, yeah, thank goodness, that's two days from today, we will have our first ever edition of Coach Speak is the name of it. Uh, we'll be out at Quibitos beginning at 6 o'clock. We may move it a little bit up this Sunday just to get things wrapped up prior to that little kickoff down in Orlando between the Seminoles and your LSU Tigers. We'll work on that. Uh, but we will name our Quibitos Player of the Week from each of the five squads that we cover, Ash, Tioga, Pineville, Menard, and Buckeye. We'll name those. At the end of the year, each school will name its Player of the Year. We'll have a banquet for them put on by Quibitos, and we will name our 446 Sports Player of the Year, and that is out of the entire group on there. So join us Internet-only broadcast of it. Uh, it's after hours at Quibitos, but we're very thankful. He said, we'll just he'll give you the keys and, and, and show you where the, the food is at. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I told my wife, I said, what time is that show going to be over? I was like, Tuesday. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun out there. This inaugural edition of Big Thanks out to John Valenzuela. And happy birthday, John. I know you're listening back home. Happy birthday out to John Valenzuela. Uh, today turned uh, 40. Let's just yeah. go. Let's go with that, too. But a great to have. He doesn't look his age. Great day. You're right. Great to have the folks at Quibido. So, Chef John, happy birthday to you. But that's a lot of the things that we have going on. One of the prime ones, of course, is our why not stop keys to the game. So, Coach, take it away. Hey, the first one is fast start like the Jamboree. I mean, two quick plays scored, I mean, two touchdowns early unlike what happened last year in this exact game where Karen Crow came out and, and, and took it to him and we went down 21 nothing. So Start gonna, fast. That's it. Key get number one. I like what you did there. Yeah, let, let's get it going. Let's get it going. I mean, these guys, the athletes that they have, I mean, you do not want to start behind the eight ball here. So that was that's that's key number one. Number two, if we if Alexander can establish the running game, okay, last week in the two in the thirty minutes, they actually ran them for more yards than they passed. They went over 200 yards rushing, under 100 yards, and still scored that many points. So you've got a head coach that went to <laughs> college as a receiver and that runs a NASCAR offense, and you're wanting to establish a run to set up the pass? Hey, Lane Kiffin will run the ball, so I think we can too. So, so you, don't want to set up the, you don't want to use the pass to set up the run. <laughs> I like what, I like what you're talking about. And if you talk to Coach Bachman, he'll tell you the same thing. They're going to get Lindsey involved behind that big, experienced offensive line to get things going. Key number one, key number two, I hear the car starting up. Give me number three. Number three on Trojan defense. The eye discipline at each level. Last year, especially the second touchdown, the, you know, the, the quarterback faked like he was running and just dropped the ball right over to a back who ran out the backfield, free safety, ran up. Everybody was crashing the ball. So the discipline, they're quick at the line of scrimmage with their run, run, their run game. So the defense line needs to, needs to pay attention to it. The second level needs to pay attention to it, and the third level, they don't need to, 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 to take the bait and jump up, you know, and then, then pop the, the pass over. So eye discipline at every level is very critical. Fast start, establish the run, and eye discipline on defense. Why are you even in the booth? Why aren't you down there, Coach? Because this is why we, we do it. Great job 
on the keys to the game. We'll check in at halftime and, and, and see how you're doing with that on there. Again, Doug Gann alongside of Nick Magnano. Coach, uh, audio only for those folks that are tuning in, just to remind you, they have a, a, a no live stream policy during the games here. And out of respect to Coach, respect for Coach Corville and his program here, we will, uh, we will not be bringing you live stream action per their rules, but it will be tape delayed. So if you're watching this tomorrow, Chuck's going to try to get it uploaded sometime on the way. Or no, I'll probably will try to get it uploaded because Chuck's driving <laughs> on this one. When we told Chuck that he was coming down here, he was like, uh, oh, I get to just kick back and enjoy a Friday night. And you and I both uh, snickered a little bit on that and said, yeah, come on. But uh, he's, he's advising and looking and helping, and, and brother-in-law is down there on the production today and did a fantastic job last week uh, with his production level of it. So welcome aboard. The only cog to this wheel that we're missing is Roger Walker, our cameraman, who is back home in this one, doesn't make the road trips, but... One of these days when he retires from teaching, he'll start making these trips. But thank you. That was our Why Not Stop Keys to the Game. Pay attention throughout the night and throughout the morning for our Southern Air Heating and Cooling Cool Play of the Game. You'll see that. We had a lot of uh, response to that on a YouTube page. And thank you to everyone that is following along. We reached 1,000 Facebook subscribers. Chuck and I talked about that during the week. Uh, two years ago, we started our YouTube channel, and, and our goal was to get to 100 subscribers. And, and we got there, and here we sit at 1,000, and, and I challenged him now. we got to get that number to 10,000. That's our next number. So we'll, we'll work on that. So if you're, following along on, if you're following along on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're at, hop on over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button. And, and how much does it cost you to subscribe? Zero. Zero. So there you have it and all of those funds. And I guarantee... Now, let me just tell you this, too. I guarantee if you subscribe and you don't like what you're seeing or hearing, we'll refund double your money <laughs> That's it. that you paid for it. So there, there you have. Got another break coming up. We're about 11 minutes from kickoff. We'll get back here in just a moment. Going to take another break. You are listening to slash watching Ash Trojan football from Karen Crow, Louisiana, right here on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Appliance Parts Company in Alexandria has all your major appliance parts needs. We sell parts to all major appliances as well as new appliances, including window units, chest, and upright freezers. Appliance Parts originally opened its doors on Lee Street in 1972, and we're now open at a new location on Memorial Drive to serve you better. Stop by, say hey to our crew, and check out our awesome holiday gifts. Appliance Parts, 2208 Memorial Drive in Alexandria next to Target. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday from 9 till 12. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, 
The trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call. Buying car insurance for the first time can be overwhelming. Do you have enough coverage? Are you paying too much? Will someone be there for you when the unexpected happens? I'm Jason Hawk with Farm Bureau Insurance. You may think it's easier online, but why wait? We're here to help you make sure you're covered. When it comes to car insurance, we have the answers, and we may have rates that save you money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK or online at talktohawk.com and let us help you protect your biggest investments. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. It all started and with a sketch on To the Crow Dome, Doug Gann alongside of Nick Magnano and the Trojans getting ready to make their way out onto the field. You see them off to our right getting ready. They will be on the far sideline. Karen Crow down to our left getting ready to come out again. Just a reminder, if you're watching along, this game will be audio only throughout its entirety. We are recording it, and it will be tape delayed and sent back out over the airways, rebroadcast in the morning, where you'll be able to see what was a classic. So in a um, back-to-the-future type of way, if you're watching this while it's tape delayed, well, good Saturday morning to you. Yes, sir. Coach is finishing up their prayer on the far side. We're getting ready to uh, get things going here. Five and a half minutes, Coach. An opening day from uh, as a player's perspective, as a coach's perspective, but up here, it's not so bad. The AC's going. The food was good. And, and a big thanks out to the Karen Crow folks for providing the food as well. So uh, looking forward to a big, big game here tonight. A little uh, little bit of revenge in this one as uh, the Trojans fell 35-20 to 20 last year in that game after starting down 21 to nothing in week one and week two before that instant classic that was St. Thomas Moore and Alexandria a week ago, so uh, or a year ago. Trojans again in all white with the purple numbers getting ready to make their way out onto the field. Just four and a half to go until kickoff. We will uh, try to get our way down there. It looks like the boxer's not wanting to know which one wants to come out first. <laughs> uh, Karen Crow down on the left side of us, standing in behind their, their uh, banner that's there. You know, they went to these ones that, that you tear apart and then you put right back together, and so that makes it that makes it kind of kind of neat that's down there. Along the top of the screen, you will be able to keep up with the clock. You'll see the time. You'll see all of that. But uh, you will not see that that uh, graphic removed until in the morning when we're able to do this on a tape delay level. But sit back and get ready to go. Here come the Golden Bears of Karen Crow. Again, they are in their gold pants, navy shirts with gold letters, looking like a, a little bit like the... The Wolverines just a bit, uh, or Stanford Cal is who they, I guess the Cal Golden Bears is what they, they resemble a little bit more and would make sense. Trojans still not getting their way out, all 75 or so of the Trojans waiting to get ready to go. We'll get to the starters as we move along throughout this one, but they've moved the clock off, and here come your Trojans, led by the Ash cheerleaders 
Amirion Mingo leads his troops out into this one, and this is going to be a good one. This is what we've waited all offseason for, to get back here following that disappointing loss in the playoffs. I have to tell you, Aiden Walker, um, I mean, comes out excited, you know, moving, dancing, you know, ready to play. You would not know he's such a soft-spoken <laughs> young man. Indeed he was. You got your, your first uh, dose of how these guys are so physical on the field. But uh, when they come up and get in front of the press box or in front of the, the microphone, they're not getting an idea across the way. It looks like Jeremiah Jeffers Wright is uh, one of the captains. Aiden Walker is there, Mirion Mingo, and we'll try to pick up the other one too. Um, as they're coming out, that's number 70, Cam Calderon. We were able to talk to him last night. For the Golden Bears, number four is Johnny Martin. Number 10 is Caleb Celestine. And number 55 is Dejon Williams, the defensive end, the senior. And uh, Trojans, of course, will get to call this one. What a night for football. So much different than week one a year ago. Yeah, and also the, the cooler, dry weather. I mean, I know it's in the 90s, but still low humidity. You know, a little north wind that's kind of calmed down since. But, uh, but, yeah, we don't have to worry about the slick stuff. Hey, I want some rain tomorrow, though. Let's get through this. It can start raining tonight. We need to rain so bad. But, uh, but I tell you what, the, what a difference a year makes. Indeed, it does. Uh, you know, it rained throughout the contest. And so uh, we, of course, were snug in the press box. And we had the first uh, the squeegee and the wipers and then getting everything. Hopefully, by the end of the season, we'll have new windows in there. <laughs> So, hey, it's a little delay, but we'll work through it. Speaking of delays, this one, of course, is audio only and tape delayed for in the morning, but glad that you're here with us. Looks like the Bears won the toss, and they have elected to defer. See if that, in fact, is the case. Yeah, they did. They deferred, won the toss, and the Trojans will receive. They'll be going left to right down towards that neighborhood that is just beautiful that is down off to our right. Yeah, beautiful houses coming into the, the school as well. Nice. night looks like a nice area around here. Going to take a break. We're going to take our final one of the evening. We'll be back in 90 seconds, and we'll do it here. You're watching Astrogen Football on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, the trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24 seven. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, certified residential appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as rendition of our nation's national anthem. Tremendous job, and if that doesn't get the goosebumps going and things ready to go, Doug Ann alongside of Nick Magnano. 446 Sports bringing you one of three games across our platform. Of course, we had two games go off last night. Tiger with a big I think the Indians just scored again in that game. Uh, they, they pull out a big victory over the Bears of Bolton in that one. Coach Cook and his group off for a 1-0 start. 
Menard didn't fare so well up at St. Uh, let's see, they were at St. Ed's. St. Frederick's. St. Frederick's up in the Monroe area is where they were at. Three games tonight. The Trojans, of course, here. Buckeye is set to go to block. Oh, in the Jonesville area, they are there. And Pineville is playing host to the Tigers of Winfield. Should be all kicking off right about now in the middle of the field, getting set to kick things off. Looks to be... Is that Babineau that's, uh, that's kicking as well? Yes, it is. Why not? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, he may kick it up to himself and run under it <laughs> and get it. Jalen Johnson is back deep. He is joined back in the back by J.T. Lindsey, two of the most explosive run men that you will find. And uh, scrimmages are done. Jamboree is done. All of the fanfare is over with, and we are underway. That one back right down the middle. J.T. is going to pick it up at the 10-yard line. J.T. now up the middle to the 20, busts around. He had everybody to beat out to the 32-yard line. That goes, that's the only time I'm going to do that one. Coach, go ahead. I'll tell you what, that was great field position. Good clean catch. Uh, here we go. Indeed, 11:53. Win the Trojans scrimmage from uh, their own 33-yard line. We'll get a look at the set. We know that JT is going to be back in the backfield with Feaster. They come all the way to the near sideline, and that brings EJ Scott to the near side. Got to believe that is Jalen Johnson in man coverage. Mingo settles into the slot nearest where we are on the home side. JT goes out in motion. Back to pass is Feaster. They run that little bubble screen. It is complete. That's Darius Washington. Darius has got it looking to break free, and he gets down to the 45, rumbles to the 40-yard line of Karen Crow, and that's – you see the pressure that came through on Karen Crow. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, with patience there, let it let it set up, and, and here we go. Played on that uh, aggressiveness of Karen Crow. Snap is back. JT wasn't ready for it, and he's going to get caught up in the backfield. I think uh, three-yard loss, two-yard is what they'll give him, but snapped the ball, and JT was not ready for it, uh, for that play to go off. Yeah, he got a little, little ahead of himself there. You see the scoreboard up at the top of it. We're just underway. We'll keep you up to date on the time. Lindsey's got that one now. He's getting to the outside, goes JT. Spun around. He's going to be down at the 36-yard line. Picks back the two he lost, picks up another five. That's going to make it third down, and five give him seven yards on that one one minute into this contest big third down for the trojans and you know that they are set to go for it from down here time out called by karen crow and they are not happy about this at all gonna leave it right here coach and what caused that time out i tell you they they weren't set they i mean they were trying to get the play in defense call in and, and boy coach corville was not happy. he's still not happy no, he's not. And uh, for those folks back home, you had a little reminder from your Bolton days when you watch Coach C walk around. I tell you, he reminds me of my old head coach, Coach Brownlee Parmley. And, uh, boy, I tell you, <laughs> there's no he, – he's fiery. I mean, don't, don't, get, don't just look at him and think that he, he's not fiery. He's a fiery guy. What's your biggest takeaway from the game when you played it and Coach Parmley was there to today's game? I think just advancement in the, in the, the – the, the, the schemes. You're getting you know? too deep, Coach. Yeah. It's I mean, them just, shorts. Oh, it's yes. Them, I'm sorry. Them coaches' shorts <laughs> yes, are you, gone. Yeah. Those old bike shorts <laughs> That's with two right. snaps. That's you right. Know? The old two snap <laughs> shorts. That's right. Would hold anything you needed, though. That's right. You're Tape exactly and scissors right. and all of that. Here we are back. Trojans from the 36 yard line going left to right. 10 52. Alan Johnson in. The Johnson is in the backfield. Now Mingo's to the near side. And, uh, White Hat coming in. He's settling back in. You've got Townsend, it looks like, in the backfield. It's kind of a fullback that's over there. First time that we've seen that set. Well, this year, check that. Townsend's to the left. H-back set is where he at. Feaster settles in at quarterback. Hard count trying to draw off the Navy and gold, Golden Bears. Settling in beside Feaster. And quick pass over to Mingo. Mingo's going to have to shake and bake a little bit. He does. He gets the first down. Makes a man miss to the 20 inside that and spun around and down is my my Mingo to the 17 yard line. Give him the 16 and that's a first down for the Trojans. And that is just Mingo being Mingo making things happen. He moves over to the far side now. He and Jalen Johnson. Johnson is in man coverage. That's where they like to go to the fade to Jalen. Tylen Johnson, the running back. He will get it this time. Cuts up the middle. It's going to be dropped at the 15, but give him just a yard 
on that play. And coach, that's where they missed that middle linebacker number 20. Yeah, yeah, and Townsend there on the on the block. If he could have kicked him outside, there were the holes there, but he pushed him inside right into the back. The lightning portion of the thunder and lightning is back in there. There's a big snap throw over to Mingo. Got one man coverage again. Mingo's gonna make his man miss, and he's gonna gallop into the end zone. That's a touchdown, Ash Trojans. Touchdown, my my Mingo. See if we can pick that up on the instant replay uh, and see what we've got going there. Not sure. We'll get back to live action on that and work on that. I'll tell but you what, they, they're man-to-man. -man. Cameron Crow's playing man-to-man, -man, and Mingo, that's two that he's beat them on the man-to-man. -man. You're going to get hurt if you stay in the man-to-man -man early. Two minutes in, a minute 58, officially 10.02 remaining here in the first, and the Trojans strike first. There's no 21 to nothing in this one. Snap is back. That kick is up from Van Dyke, and it is up, and it is good. 7-0 Trojans lead at 10.02 to go here in the first. You're listening to Ash Trojan Football on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin, an idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. And we are back here to the Crow Dome. Trojans take a 7 0 lead. My My Mingo on that one, and a variety of guys had the football. Just a reminder, you'll be able to see all of this in video action tomorrow. 10 02 here in the first quarter of play in the Trojans strike first in this one. Coach and uh, Channing Mesh set to kick things off. Yes, sir. Feaster three for three on that drive for 60 yards and a touchdown. What a great start. Mesh set to put a foot into it and does. Hits a squibbler kick that's going to get around get and bounce there. into the end zone, and that's exactly what you wanted to do. First kick, first touchback, and that Trojan defense coming to work. Yeah, I get that touchback there. I mean, now you're – you're 13 yards in positive field, field, uh, field, goal, field position advantage from, from our kick return to theirs. There you go. And uh, starting with 80-yard drives, it's difficult to go. But uh, this is what we've looked at all week long. And when we saw this one and we saw the work that Chance Babineau does, we've seen him do a lot of things. And he is out there at quarterback now. Good-looking good looking young man, big, tall quarterback, six foot 190, the sophomore quarterback already receiving D1 offers. Babineau gets his line set and brings a man in motion to the near side. He's going to snap throw this one backwards. It's a halfback pass and wide open. A little bit of a flea flicker. Jason Blackwell unable to wrap up and tackle, but uh, a little bit of trick racing. And they've not called him down yet. Still off and running. Finally going to get him on. Well, we think they'll get him onto the ground. Tackled inside the five. And, oh, my goodness, 50, 45 yards after the catch. And this Crow Dome crowd is going crazy. That was back uh, thrown to number two, Kashmir Batiste, that had that. We'll look and see who threw that. It was a receiver that came in motion. Was that Austin Dyson that threw the ball? Transferred over, was playing offensively or defensively last year. They moved him to wide receiver once Babineau came in. First and goal from inside the 10 down to the 7. And my goodness, what an answer. We told you it was going to be a fast one tonight. Babineau. Under center now, hands the ball off, and that is directly up the middle. Running the ball into the end zone is Johnny Martin for the touchdown. Two plays and a touchdown. My goodness. And they will stay out there, it looks like. Not sure if they're staying out to go for the to go for two. If Babineau just stays out, he may kick the extra points, too. Yeah, the kicker's out there now. He's they have there. him listed as an athlete, so watch him. That is number, is that 40? 42 or no 48, 48 Xander yeah. Blanchard that's in there to try to tie this thing up wow just uh, 52 seconds go off the clock on that one most of that was on the run where they couldn't get that young man down swinging gate closes up just a little bit and Blanchard settles there out of the hold of Babineau but think Babineau could pick it up and, and run it anytime he wanted to snap is back it's high but there and it's tipped but going to just fall short. Good pressure by the Trojans. So back-to-back uh, -back touchdowns here in this one. Trojans lead it, though, via the extra point, 7-6. You're watching Ash Trojan football right here on 446 Sports. 
Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, the trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. impressive drive for the Trojans and then two plays later off of that big little wide receiver backwards lateral type of pass it wasn't a flea flicker it wasn't uh, it wasn't a halfback pass it was a, a screen a backward screen to the receiver Dyson who chunked it downfield and it was uh, it was down the way to Cashmere Batiste for uh, gosh if they were 20 so 30 seven so, yeah it was uh, 70 yards or so uh, on that pass now 45 of it was after the run or after the catch, but still catching our breaths as Babineau set to put a foot into this one, and he does right down the middle. Going to get over the head of JT. Now he's got to pick it up. It may set that offense in motion a little bit. JT to the 15, now 20, bangs around, and they'll start at the 27. Will the Trojans had to go back and feel that one over his shoulder? Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, the first one was shorter than that, obviously, so just trying to play. Play what you saw the first time. Wow. So the Trojans gave the ball to Karen Crow at 10.02. Now they've got it back at 9.02, clinging to that one-point lead on that uh, extra point that was tipped and just enough to keep it short from Babineau. But uh, my goodness, this is, uh, this is everything that we thought it would be and more. Don't forget, you'll be able to, to watch this one in its entirety tomorrow morning when we get everything uploaded. Feaster in there. Quarterback's got JT. Two receivers to the top, one to the near side. Feaster play action and goes down to seam over the middle, but throws that one a little bit behind Mingo. In coverage was number 19, and that is Lance Hayes. Think that was just a little behind Mingo. If he gets it out in front of him, Mingo may still be running. Yes, sir. I like the idea. Now look how they've they've gotten off of Mingo a little bit more. The press coverage is not there, so you have that opportunity just to zip the ball out to him. Feaster back to pass. Kind of a back shoulder stop. He's out of bounds. Plants his foot out of bounds. Good call by the official to the near side as that ball turned E.J. Scott around. And the Trojans are looking at third and ten here uh, with only ten seconds off the clock. Yeah, left foot came down out of bounds. Right foot came down in bounds, but it was after the left foot was already out of bounds. Feaster's got two to the far side. It's Mingo and I guess that's um, Jalen Johnson up to the top. He will bring... Into motion is E.J. Scott, Lindsey in the backfield with him. Third straight pass, stepping up is Feaster, and he's going to be dropped in the backfield. Nowhere to go. Big time pressure by the Golden Bears. Yeah, Cameron. You know, Cyprian, Cyprian, yeah, there. coming in there doing that. Big senior, 6'3", 215, and yes, he is. Yeah, and he plays both ways. He plays tight end on offense. Boy, he had such a promising drive they got going, but three, two incompletions and the sack right there. Back deep to receive is Babineau back deep to receive the kick. It looks like his, his six once again. Feaster will stay on the punt. The snap comes short, but he's able to corral it. Puts a good foot into that, and that's going to cause that one to bounce around and a fair catch to be called from Babineau. And, uh, yeah, I did see him taking tickets when they were coming in, too. So he does a little bit of everything. I'll tell you <laughs> I'm waiting to see him on the headset and calling plays on the defense, too. <laughs> it, would, it would not surprise me in the slightest. First down and 10, and the, the Trojans did not need to go three and out there. 8.09 remaining in the first as Karen Crow goes right to left. You see the Wallace High Associates scoreboard at the top. We'll keep you up to date on some of the others. You'll see the Saddlers towing it scroll when we are able to run the scoreboard in the morning. You'll see that's so all of the scores. But we'll try to keep you updated on that Pineville score. Also Buckeye as well on our sister networks here. In motion goes number 13 is Bernard. Bernard's going to get it there and brought down on the side. Good job defensively coming up and making that one. Yeah, Jalen Kirk on that tackle. Tell you what, for short one-yard gain, but boy, if he, I'm glad he made it. If he would have missed that, he, he probably would have had the first down there. Indeed he would. Uh, Bernard goes out to the right to the near side. Big, tall, lanky number nine, Austin Dyson. We saw him throw the football earlier on that kind of a wide receiver screen, but it's all 
on Chance Babineau. And there's a penalty flag. It's going to be called offsides against the Trojans. And uh, that's going to give them five yards. Probably lined up in the neutral zone was the near side. Looked like Gaines, who we did not see play last week because he was recovering from that injury. But my goodness, when you get somebody at second and nine, second and four certainly makes a big difference. Well, that's interesting, Doug, because, I mean, he was not. I mean, we, he was right in line with us. I mean, maybe his face mask, maybe. Babineau, same set, seven and a half to go, nearing that six-minute timeout. Babineau comes under center now. He's dangerous from there. Handoff goes to the lead back, and he's getting to the outside. And that is number two, Kashmir Batiste, who gets, strikes through for about 15 yards and a Karen Crow first down. And the Bears are uh, picking up where they left off last year running the football. Yeah, Jalen Lewis there on the tackle. So Batiste, again, as we near that six-minute uh, mandatory timeout here in the months of September and may run it into October the way the heat has been. Three receivers to the near side, but they don't oftentimes stay that way. They'll, they like to shift just a little bit beforehand. 15 seconds on the play clock. First down and 10 for Karen Crow from the Trojan 36-yard line. Snap is back. Babineau's got it. Hands off to Batiste, and he just a uh, shifty little runner. The ball comes out. Trojans are saying that they have it. We'll see what, what it is. The umpire's pointing down. They're saying that it was down, and that's not going to make Coach Josh Mercer happy. No, the Trojans have had it, and that's a turnover. Oh, they're calling that Trojans defense is going to have to get back out there quickly or get a timeout because they are saying the Trojans are not going to be ready. The ball has stayed, the official at least standing over the football, but you got to get that defense back out there now. They should. You almost got to get a timeout there if you're Bachman in that group, but uh, ball was on the ground. One official said it was, one didn't, so they'll play on Bears. Handoff goes to Batiste, and he is uh, pulled backwards, but he's going to fall over for a first down. Batiste just continues to grind those legs. Yeah, yeah, Nelson there, you know, got his jersey, but didn't quite get him down, and, and White ended up taking him down. Officials time out here for the six-way point. We'll take it with them. Be back in one minute. You're watching Astrogen Football right here on 446 Sports. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier. Transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate. And we are back here and uh, Karen Crow brings out that wing gun formation just a little bit as Coach, Coach Corville calls it. Seven to six, Trojans have the lead halfway through the first. But Karen Crow, after forcing a three and out from the Trojans, are marching, and they're marching right to left here. Down at the 25-yard line, first down and 10, nearing that red zone. Batiste flanks to the left side of Babineau. Babineau back to pass, going over the top. Good coverage, but right in the hands, and never turned around. That pass is complete to Antoine Alexander. No correction, that's 13. Kendrick Bernard, who catches that. And I'm telling you, uh, at that point, Gaines never turned around. Yeah, I mean, it ended up being a perfectly thrown ball, but once again, he's face guarding, doesn't, doesn't make the turn, doesn't try to find the ball, and uh, and it goes right past his ear hole. And the, the, the one thing you do, you want to look at the receiver's eyes or his hands, but uh, it was perfectly thrown and placed right over the top, but it's 12-7 to 7 in this one. Lining up for the swinging gate, you got the kicker that is sprang, flanked out to the right. We'll see if Babineau calls him in or he continues to run this one. Spread formation over the offense, and now he sneaks up under center. He's going to run it right up the middle, and Babineau looks like he is in for the two-point conversion. And uh, following that first drive, Karen Crow doing just about anything that they want to here offensively and defensively. Yeah, I tell you, you know, of course, first pass on the last drive that Ash had, you know, leads to the mingo a little bit there. You know, might be different, but that's part of it. You know, and then 
then that that play, you know, on the on the the fumble, not fumble. I wish they would have taken a little more time as a crew to talk about it. Back judge was was pointing for Ash. The umpire was pointing. The ball was down, and and they didn't really talk too much about it. Back deep to receive J.T. Lindsey. He stands at the Trojan five-yard line. He is there with Jalen Johnson, who is at the Alexandria 10, waiting for the Karen Crow Golden Bears to make their way out onto the field. My goodness, it'll be good to go back and see this one again in the morning uh, as we post this tape-delayed version of it due to Karen Crow rules. That is why we are audio only, unable to make the stream. So all of those people that want it back on the radio, here you go. <laughs> 5.54 to go. Karen Crow with a 14-7 to lead here in the first. So whereas it was not a 20 to one to nothing start, it's been a 14-0 run for the Golden Bears. And we'll see what Alexandria has as an answer to this one. You cannot get behind this explosive team lining up set to tee it up is number 48, and that's Xander Blanchard. Kick is a squib down the middle. We'll see if JT's able to come up and get it. He does at the 18. Trying to come all the way to the far side now. Reverse his field. Trying to go to the other way if he can get to the corner. It's not going to matter as penalty flags come down, and the Trojans will start, I would say, somewhere down around their 10-yard line, perhaps 10 to 15, following that penalty for what is going to be an illegal use of hands on the return team, illegal block. So the Trojans just uh, out of sorts following that first drive. We'll see if they come out and do what key number one was, and that's establish that run. Or I'll correction, you, that was number two, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But I, but they did they did do number one. They came out with a fast start. But I tell you, Feaster was three for three, 60 yards on the first drive, and 0 for two with a sack on the second drive. Well, the Trojans will start this one from their 19-yard line. First down and 10. Feaster's got Lindsey in the backfield. Mingo in the slot. He's joined there by the Trojans' number four, E.J. Scott. Handoff goes to Lindsey, but he is hit in the backfield, and that offensive line is just getting, uh, it's, it's getting backed up. They're setting what is that secondary line of scrimmage as they're just pushing the Trojans back right off the ball. That's a loss of one. Yeah, not firing off the ball too well. Here goes Feaster and the Trojans coming up now. Press coverage. Play action. That's got Mingo, and there's got to be a... Here there comes the flag from there the far is, side, is. and that's going to be pass interference as the receiver was all over Mingo yeah, as goes, that one came through. Yeah, he went through his back early. I mean, that was obvious. Just surprised that it was the line judge on the far <laughs> side. That, not the one. That's correct. Indeed, but uh, it's, it's early in the season for these guys pass interference. Now it will be a 10-yard penalty again. They'll give him 15 out of it, uh, and it is a first down. Not an automatic first down. Remember, there are only a couple of situations that warrant an automatic first down. First and 10 for your Ash Trojans. They have it from the 34-yard line. Two receivers to the near side. That is E.J. Scott that says he's got some room. Now quickly coming this way is Washington. Back to pass. They've got to set up the screen just out of the outstretched hands of J.T. Lindsey. And I'm going to tell you, he would have went 66 yards to the house, but he didn't. Yeah, you know, get a little pressure there on by Karen Crow's <laughs> number seven. He's kind of like number six there. I mean, he's, he, he does everything as well. Well, he came off the edge and just did not give, you know, Feaster the time to get the proper touch on that one. A lot of players play both ways for this Karen Crow team. 518, but limited numbers. Two to the near side, one to the top. Lindsay in the backfield with Feaster. Feaster back just to pass now. Zips this one out, and that's that stop route. It is complete and out of bounds, and that's going to be a first down complete to Darius Washington. I tell you what, he throws that well. He throws that back shoulder well, and I mean, he threw the ball before it was out, uh, before the, the receiver made Throw the, the receiver open, that's he says. Right. Babino moves inside in coverage. Handoff is going to go to Lindsay, though. Lindsay spun around. He's going to be dropped. Penalty flag on the field. Looks like we may get a hold down the field. It'll be measured from there, and it is. So if I look right, it's going to be first down and about 18. Cameron Calderon is going to be whistled for. He's hurt. He's hurt. Or correction, he's down, and that's the center for the Trojan young man that we had on there on the show last night. He was walking to the sideline, but it looks like he's going to try to fight through it. They call that from the line of scrimmage is where they got that from. So it's uh, 
about a yard perhaps ahead of it. So it'll be 19. First down and 19, you mark it from the spot. That's what makes that holding penalty so, uh, so rough when it is behind the line of scrimmage. That one was downfield. But again, the Trojans find themselves in a hole. First down and 19, 451 and counting. And a penalty flag is whistled there. Offsides now again. And, and that's the second time that a cornerback has been called for offsides. One for the Trojans, now one for the Golden Bears. And, and Coach, you and I don't like that call. No, I don't. Of course, I know the, I know the receiver looks at the you know, side judge, asks if he's good. I know the DB doesn't get that, that, that right. But, boy, that's a tough call. First and 14, 446 to go here in the first quarter play. Karen Crow, 14 to oh, 7. There. Feaster going over the top. He's got Jalen. Jalen's going to bobble that one around, and there's going to be a pass interference call once again. And, and look, we've told you, we've told you over and over in high school, if you beat, call it, get the penalty. I yeah. mean, because then you're only going 10 yards. Yeah, ball a little underthrown, but, uh, you know, and he, he played it well. Uh, you know, Jalen played it well, went to high point the ball, and the DB just ran right through him. That's they'll not give them first down. Nope, they'll give them 15 yards though, and that will be, be enough for yeah. a first down. That is two 15-yard penalties for pass interference on this drive alone. But I'm telling you, if not, Jalen was right there. So I like what I'm seeing out of that Trojans pass game. Just missed the one to Lindsey earlier on the play that would have scored it. But that's first down and ten now from the Bears 44-yard line. 4:35 remaining here in the first. Trojans moving left to right. From the school to the neighborhood as we look at it. Feaster back to pass. Throws this one. Knocked around and intercepted. No, the ball is on the ground. But, uh, goodness, good job of turning around by Darius Washington and playing defense right there. Yeah, and Joni Martin, I think, had a, had a bunch of, bunch of uh, Washington's jersey there on that cut. But you Tell know. you what you set up is that pump fake and yes, the, the stop and go route. You're right. And you notice they're playing off of Mingo now. I don't blame him. Handoff up the middle goes Lindsey. Bangs into that line, but it is Karen Crow that's getting the better of the trenches here in this one. Third down and a long six, maybe seven. They'll give it quickly. They go 413 remaining from the 41. Snap throw over to Mingo. We'll see if he can make a man miss. Spun around is going to be dropped down at the 39-yard line they give him. The Trojans from the 39. i got to believe they'll go for it here. It's going to be fourth down and four. Could be a pooch kick out of it. Feaster is the punter still. Out of sorts is that defense for Karen Crow. Tell you, Doug, they're playing one, one, one middle linebacker. And then the free safeties, eight yards off the, off the ball in the center. Tanner Townsend comes over to the near side. Feaster can quick kick from there. He sends Tanner out in motion. Back to pass is Feaster. He's got pressure. He's got to escape it. Looking downfield. Dumps this one off, oh. and it's in it. In the area, but out of uh, out of the reach of JT Lindsay, and that will be a turnover on downs. And my goodness, uh, again, just inches away from really making some big plays. But uh, you know what they say about frogs and wings and all that stuff. So, yeah, but I will tell you this: I know this is week number one. I mean, two, three weeks from now, that touch pass is going to be there, and he's scoring. I mean, Jeremiah Jeffers right out on the field now, ready to go to work and anchor that defensive line. He's out there by Jordan Mason. Defensively along with them, Carrick Gaines is there. Jason Blackwell, the big big hitter for these Trojans. And then uh, Amarion Ford anchors that middle linebacker spot. You see Aiden off to the far side line. So a four-man front for the Trojans. Kind of a stand-up linebacker to the near side. Here comes Motion. Back to pass is Babineau. He's looking over the top. He's going to throw this one. Got a man. Goes up and gets it, and the Trojans are not covering at all tonight in this one. Austin Dyson, who was a recipient, or threw the ball earlier on that big trick oration, goes up at high points and gets that one. Yeah, and right. uh, perfect job by the receiver. Yeah, around Hall coverage there on free safety. I mean, just ran, ran free. The ball was actually underthrown, you know, because the pressure that the Trojans put on him. Almost got to him, but, you know, still had the completion. Babineau not afraid to throw it up to his receivers. Does a good job of getting that ball down the field and letting his big guys go and make some work. He's now got three receivers to the far side. First and 10 from the 31-yard line of the Trojans, 247. 14 to 7. Golden Bears lead this one over your Trojans. Back to pass is Babineau. He's got pressure. Going to be brought down in the backfield. That's a big-time stop, and that's big-time Aiden Walker. 
Yes, sir. Kept containment. Tried to, he tried to, you know, force him inside, and, boy, whenever he made the cut, he was there. Talked to, him on, talked to him on the show last night and said, you know, Babineau's a good player. He said, yes, sir, we're good players, too. And uh, <laughs> absolutely, 222 to go. Give him five yards on that loss. We'll make it second down and 15 from the Trojan 35. First time, really, that Karen Crow has been behind the sticks on this one, 210 and counting. 14 to 7, Karen Crow leads this one. Babineau has Batiste flanked to his right. Sends him out in motion. Babineau now back to pass. He's getting pressured up the middle. Zips this one back in and out of the hands. Good pressure coming up and making that defensive stop uh, for the Trojans was Carrick Gaines. Pass was intended once again for number 13. That's Kendrick Bernard, and that's kind of a safety net for uh, Babineau. Yeah, he's, he's the one, and I'll tell you, that's the eye discipline we were talking about. He held he's the way back, wait for the ball to be released, and then, then closed in on the play. Third down and 15. For Karen Crow, this would be that opportunity to get Karen Crow off the field. He's got two receivers to the top. That's Johnny Martin up at the top alongside of Bernard. Babineau has Batiste in the backfield with him, and that is Austin Dyson to the near side. Babineau gets his offensive line set, calls for it. Third consecutive pass attempt. Oh, we got a there goes Walk, Walker the, in and out of the hands. The hold not call is trying to get that out of there. But that pass intended for Cameron Cyprian, and, and uh, Trojans got lucky. And unlucky on the same play. I'll tell you what. Hey, it happens on both sides. And you're exactly right. <laughs> you know. Look, that's that's football, and that's what it is. I've, uh, yeah, fourth down and 15. you got to believe if Karen Crow, don't forget that Babineau can do that quick kick as well. 149 clock has stopped following the incomplete pass. Babineau stays in there. He's got, um, he's got Batiste to his right. Same two receiver to the top, one to the near side set that sees Bernard in man coverage, sending Batiste out. No quick kick coming here, but there's pressure forced back to the inside. Jeremiah's got to get him, throwing the ball over to a wide open receiver into the end zone. But great job defensively going up and making that play because wide open was the receiver. But the ball just floated up there. Try to get some better eyes in mind and see who that was that, that pushed him down. It may have been Blackwell. It was. It was yeah, Blackwell. number 22, Jason Blackwell goes up. Covers because the ball was just thrown so high yeah. that it allowed the receiver to go back and get it, and the Trojans forced their own turnover on downs. Well, Aiden forces them, you know, pressure there, and then uh, White steps up and, and, and puts the, you know, secondary pressure on him. So he had, to, he had to throw it off his back foot. He was open, but I tell you, that Jason closed quickly. No, nobody covering the two receivers to the top of the field. Now you've got one receiver out. i got to think Karen Crow's got to get a timeout. Mingo wide open, nobody on him. But uh, coming up and doing a great job, Mingo just Hold getting his receiver ball. off. That was number four. Johnny Martin was the only one covering two receivers. He had Mingo and he had Jalen Johnson. <laughs> Couldn't get the snap fast enough, could we? No, do? and Mingo's just doing jumping jacks to the near side. Now he's over here with us. And that is E.J. Scott to the offsides. near side, but it's going to be offsides against the defense. And, Coach, that's the third. It's got to be something that they're watching this year on that. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that's also one of those things to where that speed, that pressure, I mean, that going fast, you know, they're not getting lined up. Unlike the, the one against Ash and the first one that's Karen Crow, this one was just they're, they're trying to get set up. And you're right, uh, those Golden Bears on defense, tough to get to the line of scrimmage. JT's got that one. Good hole off to the left side. And JT banging around over folks is going to be pushed out of bounds there. Right at midfield is where they'll mark that one. He may have the head of the football inside. No, it's going to be just across the 49, but another first down in the Trojan set to go fast. Back to pass is Feaster. He's looking. Oh, he pulls that one down now. He's going to have to tuck it and run. Does Feaster and picks up three yards. And uh, we'll there. take that one. Yes, we will. Nothing wrong there. The pressure was on him. He made something positive out of it. Get back and get another play called. They mark him uh, out of bounds. Said he stepped out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. Ooh, 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 Thought he was two or three yards down, but uh, that's okay. He'll be marked at the 49 yard. Now they're going to discuss it just I a little bit. To say, making me, don't make me erase my, my three yard gain that I just wrote down. <laughs> that's right. It's why you write in pencil. That's right. But Looks I'll tell like, you what, I want this one in pen. I want this there. No, the ball's, the ball's there for some reason. The, but the stick is back there. Yeah. So now they'll, they'll call a little officials timeout, come out and. They're calling it, it looks like an illegal, illegal participation is what, uh, is what I see. And Coach Corville is just livid about things on the near sideline. 
illegal participation against the Golden Bears, and that's going to result in a first down, we do believe, for the Trojans. 49.9 remaining in what has, all I can say, has been an explosive, explosive first uh, 12 minutes of play. I tell you, it has. Uh, now on that one, Doug, will we get the, the plays dead? Or, or do you, he actually get the three-yard gain and then it's automatic first down? Well, they're having to discuss it down <laughs> there. That means that we're going That's to have right. to. And we'll see what the official comes up with. He's waving the flag off after they talk. About, and look, let me tell you, if you're going to, I'll take that any That's day right. of the week. If they'll get together and get the call right, I don't care what the call is. Just get the call right. I wish they would have done the exact same thing on the fumble earlier that Ash caused that they did not take the time to, to, to talk about. Second down and seven, so they will give Feaster the three yards. And uh, Coach Bachman now, he wants an explanation from the White Hat about that as well. And that's the uh, end of the explanations. It's here comes that Trojan offense sprinting out on the field, and they are ready to go to work all the way to the near side. Comes E.J. Scott. He is in man coverage. He's out on Jeremy Lawrence. Lawrence giving him nine yards off the line of scrimmage. JT is going to get that one, trying to get to the outside. He's going to have to cut it back, and he gets hammered by a host of uh, Navy and gold there along the sideline. Yeah, Three-yard loss there. I th they just strung Karen Crow's defense, strung that out. It just took too long to develop. Went to the near side, and that's tough sledding over there. You see Mingo going back to the slot on the far side. Back to pass. Here comes that pressure. Got to get out of there. Feaster's got to dump it off, and he does. Gets it near the receiver. Now, was it second or third down? Because the, the thing was, okay, there we go. They had the... Yeah, this will be fourth. Yeah. So the Trojans will come out set to punt, and Feaster will stay out there. And uh, Bachman playing a little bit of field position because he liked the way his defense came out and played last time. You'd like to pin that Karen Crow down deep. Back deep to receive. Johnny Martin goes back for the Golden Bears. 13.2 remaining in the first quarter, 14-7. to seven. Karen Crow gets it low snap, but Feaster gets it. It's high, and it's short. Got to bounce that off of one of the Karen Crow players here. That'll bounce around and up into the hands of number 17 for the Trojans. That is Cartez Simon, and that's where the Golden Bear will take over with 3.8 remaining in an explosive first quarter. Trojans strike first. They do what they want on that first drive, 7-0. Quickly answering back with a little trickeration, a three and out, and another deep score. And uh, Karen Crow has the lead 14 to 7. Not as uneventful as that first quarter was last year as the Trojans were fighting and clawing their way back from it. But it's first down and 10 from the 31 yard line. Have a break coming up between quarters. We'll take that in just a moment. 3.8 to go back in the backfield is the explosive chance Babino, and he just must never get tired because well, he's out every snap. That was going to be my thing, and I will talk about it after this play here. babino has got two in the backfield as he's back under center, settles that line down. The handoff comes to the near side, getting a lot of room. Got to come up and make a tackle, Blackwell. and they do that. Blackwell holds on until the until help comes over. That help was in the uh, in the the. Xavier White coming up and getting that one. And that does it for the first quarter of play here from Karen Crow. And what an explosive one is it has been. Does Babineau have enough in the tank to go the distance playing every down? We shall see. He sure looks like it after one. Karen Crow leads it 14-7. to seven. You're watching Astros in football right here on 446 Sports. Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the panel. Back starting things off in the second quarter of play. Again, we are tape delayed in this one. Audio only while it's live due to the rules put in place by the Bears of Karen Crow and Coach Corville, and we'll honor those 12 minutes here, set back on the clock for the second quarter of play, and it is second down. They'll get that yard marker fixture. Is it first after that play? We'll see. They're getting the 
chain set up, and I don't know. They'll move the stick to second down if it's there. Oh. Huh? Seven to nothing. Pineville has the lead over Winfield there at home in Sandy Canyon are the Rebels. Rich Dupree, Nathan Martin on that call. Glad to have the Rebels and the Indians on board. Indians got their win last night. The Rebels are, are looking to start the season off 1-0. Correction, 13-0 now. Uh, the Rebels have the lead. Second down and three. Three receivers to the near side. You'll see a lot of pressure come in on this one. This is the, the formation that Babineau's been able to scramble around a little bit and, uh, and get off one of those miracle Brett Favre-style passes. Second down and three as we start things in the second quarter of play from the 37. Karen Crow now going left to right. Quick pass is over to the near side, complete. Chasing to the outside and uh, just running down the field, and he's going to get to the house. That is number two, Cashmere Batiste. Look around, and there are no flags. That one goes 62 yards for the Golden Bear touchdown. And, uh, and it's tackling at that point, Coach. And it, it, the tackling we saw a week ago, we're not seeing tonight. I tell you, uh, Gaines, I mean, it was just a perfect block. I mean, the, run, the receiver on him pancaked him, and, and he had contained. He'd have been able to force him inside. The flow of our defenders takes him. But, boy, as soon as he got outside, it was, it was over. Dyson goes back and gives a little... High five to the to the kicker, number 48, Blanchard, as he steps up. Now he goes out onto the, the, to the wide receiver's side, and that brings Babineau back there for that swinging gate. But it's not really a swinging gate. It's just a modified extra point. Now he sneaks under center, and the Trojans are, are, are right over the line of scrimmage. Ten seconds now, and Babineau will back up a little bit. The Trojans stuffed that one just a bit, and they snap it to the up back. And it's no good. The Trojans stop. PAT, no good. 20 to 7. We'll be right back. You're watching Ash Trojan Football on 446 Sports. First time can be overwhelming. Do you have enough coverage? Are you paying too much? Will someone be there for you when the unexpected happens? I'm Jason Hawk with Farm Bureau Insurance. You may think it's easier online, but why wait? We're here to help you make sure you're covered. When it comes to car insurance, we have the answers. And we may have rates that save you money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK or online at talktohawk.com and let us help you protect your biggest investments. And we are back high above the Crow Dome. Doug in along with Nick Magnano and the Trojans struck first in this one, but they have given up 20 unanswered to the number nine ranked Golden Bears of Karen Crow. But coach, I'm telling you, it just it's a, it's a couple of inches away. I like the way the Trojans are playing offensively. They're just a step away. Yeah, it's one play here, one play. I mean, of course, the, the first touchdown drive, I mean, think you, have, think you make the tackle at the 40. He spins off our – he lands on our defender, gets up, and runs to the five. So, you know, a little, little break here and there, and it'll be different. Yep. And, again, the Trojans did get the toss. Uh, Karen Crow deferred, so they will get the ball to start things off after halftime. Coming up at halftime, we'll get you caught up with some of the games from around the way. A couple of them were last night finals. The 446 Sports family went one and one last night, hoping to run the table tonight. Jalen Johnson is back deep with JT Lindsay. Babineau back set to kick this one off. Kicking left to right goes the Golden Bear athlete. And he scrubs that one down the middle. Going to have to come up and fall on it. Trojans do, and they'll have it. At the 28, and if you noticed a little bit of desperation in the in the, the lungs there, you got it. That's number 20, Vaughn Nabon, that comes up. We saw him run the ball for the Trojans some, too, in that game last week. Alexandria has to come out and make something on this drive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and you need a sustained drive because Karen Crow, they have so many players playing both ways. We could just keep them on the field, make them chase us a little bit, and wear them out. It's like one of those MMA fights where you just keep putting shots to the leg and wearing the guy down. That's Two it. receivers to the top, one to the near side. Mingo is in the slot again, and they're trying to spread out this Karen Crow team. Feaster will call for the ball. Quick throw over to the far side. It's complete, and just hammered in the backfield is Feaster. That's going to be rough in the passer, and that will be an automatic first down as uh, Feaster just got smoked. Uh, two or three steps after he throws the ball, and that was number 84, Jalen Roberts. 
just you, you look at some of the sizes on these young guys. That's another sophomore <laughs> yeah. that's 6'2", 208, and my goodness. And can run. I mean, he closed that quickly. Penalties, penalties, penalties are racking up. Uh, but Karen Crow sits there with a 20-7 to lead, but that's uh, some 60 yards in penalties here. Early on, the Trojans, they'll move the ball to the middle of the field. That penalty puts Alexandria at their own 43-yard line, 11-30, and counting here in the second quarter. They trail 20-7. to First down and 10, Feaster's got it. He's got Lindsey in the backfield with him. Three receivers now to the near side. That's Mingo, Scott, and who's the other receiver out there? We'll get that to the side of us is Darius Washington. Back to pass is Feaster, but uh, looks like we may have a timeout. Before then, delay a game against the Trojans is called. And, and how does this, this fast-paced offense get a delay a game? I don't know. I, I think it was the setting of the ball. I think the, it took them so long to place the ball. From our sister station, Buckeye is leading 14-12 to 12 over Block on the road in Jonesville. Back to pass is Feaster. He's going over the top and just overthrows that one. You saw that when it came out. They didn't put enough air under it, but uh, might have been for the best. That wasn't one of those back shoulder ones. Yeah, for sure. Joni Martin on the coverage there, I think that's his number. And, he, I mean, he looked like the, the intended receiver. He played it well. Karen Crow is responding to this tempo of the Trojans. Now, they're playing way off trying to give up the short pass, but they close so well. That may set up that snap throw. There's that back shoulder fade. Well, that stop route that's thrown, but there was no connection. And Feaster, who was throwing it perfectly in the first quarter, is uh, is not doing it here. Has missed on his last couple. Yeah, Marquez Butler on that was the one. He just didn't look in sync. Looked like he ran the, the route a little bit. Karen Crow rotating a lot of defensive linemen in, but this third down and 15 is huge for the Trojans. You got two receivers to the near side, Lindsey in the backfield. Receiver to the, yeah, that, that uh, slot. Coverage guy to the near side was offsides. There's that snap throw that's thrown five yards behind the line of scrimmage, and you're not going to get out of that one. And uh, Jalen just blown up. They'll give him officially a loss of two on that reception. But uh, the the coaches, the defensive coaches for Karen Crow high fiving because they're blowing up those short passes. That may be an opportunity to to switch that up a little bit. Feaster stays back in there. Who do you think is back deep to receive? <laughs> Chance Babineau. Yeah, well, we need a we need a good one here, Ty. We need a unlike the 13 yarder on the last one. 10, 12 to go until halftime. Feaster puts a foot into this one and it is high and not very deep. Going to bounce around again. That'll roll inside the 30, 37 to the 36. Looks like where uh, Karen Crow will have it again. Jaden Lewis touches that one down. But, uh, goodness, it is it has just been field position battle that has been all Karen Crow in this one, and they've been able to capitalize. Time of possession, defensive work. Following that first drive by the Trojans, it has been all Karen Crow, to say the least. Yeah, big play after big play. I mean, we need them. We, we need to hold them here. They need, need a little patience here on the their under center now, these quick-hitting plays that they have on their run game. Babineau. Under center now. Looks for the first man through and get does give it to the fullback. And this um, Xavier White on the tackle there. This first first half for the Trojans, it looks like Karen Crow doing more to wear them out uh, than anything. There you see Jeremiah that's in there, Walker's there, Mason. A lot of these big time players have been neutralized tonight. Second down and five from the Karen Crow 43-yard line. Nine and a half to go until halftime. 20 to seven, Karen Crow has the lead. And they get the ball to start the second half. Got to avoid being Belichicked here because this could really open things up. Handoff goes to the far side. That's Batiste. He is uh, brought down, but never stops churning those legs. I mean, he was stopped for a loss of one, picked up three, more four, uh, number 13, came in and got him, and, uh, and, and Coach, Jaylen that's Jalen Kirk. Yeah, Kirk, yeah. And then White, White on the assist as well. Third down and inches. And uh, this is, this is uh, 
one of those where you, if you're carrying Crow, I think you're going for it on fourth down if you don't get it. So here's a shot. Maybe you get some play action. Maybe you try to bust something over the top right here. Yeah, yeah. Offensive coordinator knows he has two. He has two plays to get a half yard here. Yep, your defense is playing well. It's third and inches from the 46-yard line of Karen Crow. Handoff goes right up the middle of that big bruising fullback, and he's going to get the first, and one of the Trojan players will have to come off as a helmet came out of there, and we'll see which one it is. That's a 92. That's, That's a Jordan, Mason, Jordan Mason, the junior yeah. defensive lineman, will come off. I'll tell you, Doug, the defensive line has to get lower. They have to get lower. Karen Crow is great at getting low and driving off the ball. Austin Dyson goes out to the far side. We have this height advantage on this side, and maybe even the weight advantage, but, boy, they are getting low. They are, they are getting the leverage. Ball sits directly at midfield. Babineau back in the shotgun, and he's going to keep it this time, and he's got room to the side, lowers the shoulder, and uh, initiates the contact that time on Gaines but is driven out of bounds, but another eight-yard pickup, and this is exactly what Karen Crow did by running the football and, and controlling the tempo. Yeah, they've gone under center this one, of course. I know they, they did have one shotgun, but most of them on, on this drive has been under center, and they're just, they're just driving it. They're just going for it. Back on the Alexandria side of the field, they are at the 43-yard line, second down and three, need to get to the 40-yard line for the first down, 7-22 remaining until halftime. Batiste is back to uh, back and out of there, and that pass over to Bernard is complete. And uh, just getting all the time that he wants, Blackwell finally comes up and makes the tackle. But uh, this is a Karen Crow team that looks like they are, are worthy of that number nine ranking. Who's the eight that are better? Goodness. <laughs> yeah. i uh, tell you, they, just, they, they can pick, pick what they want to do right now. They have, they have us on our heels. This is a very fast, physical Trojan defense, and they are just getting, uh, they're getting controlled on the clock uh, and, and milking it as much as they can, down under 10 before Karen Crow snaps it, and that's exactly Golden Bear football. Batiste in the backfield, now he switches sides with Babineau, two and one on the play clock. Great job of milking it down. Babineau looking to go over the top. Got Bernard in and out of the hands and off the fingertips. Oh, Bernard that time, and oh, baby, was that a close one. Yeah, a little more air into that one, and, and it drops right in the basket. He just kind of got crossed. It, instead of being over his left shoulder, it was over his right. It was a difficult catch. Look, I am uh, I am so impressed with this young man from Karen Crow in number six, Chance Babineau. They've got him listed in one place at quarterback, strong safety, and free safety. The original roster they've got here in the press box, they've got him listed as just an athlete. And, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, definitely. I absolutely agree. 628 to go until halftime. Babineau looking over the top, throws this one out, and it's complete and out of bounds. Yeah, forced out there by Raylan Hall. I tell you, I mean, he just stepped up in the pocket there. Pocket's collapsing, and he just he steps up and keeps his eye on the receiver and puts a, a, a great throw out there in the boundary. 6.20 until halftime. Seven-yard pickup there. Third down and seven. Well, they've slowed the pace down here, but, I mean, they're controlling it. So Again, due to Karen Crow rules, it is audio only in this game. No live streaming. Third down and three. Babineau is going to keep it himself. He's hit by Blackwell, try, who tries to strip the ball out, and Babineau is not going to stop. He's finally brought down, but not before he gets to the 17-yard line. Yeah, Jaden Lewis finally took him down. I tell you, <laughs> uh, try to strip the ball. We got to got to wrap him up, boys. You wrap him up there, and you keep him, keep him from the first down there. Timeout on the field. Todd Racing timeout at six minutes. We'll take them back. We'll take it with them and be back in 60 seconds. You're listening to slash watching as Trojan football on 446 Sports. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. 
For a lifetime of the best possible vision, look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. I'm out in the books. Just a reminder to all of those that are, are trying to catch the video of this one. Schools have the opportunity to say whether you can or cannot video live from there. They don't choose to do it, and that prohibits us from doing that as well. And graciously, they let us do the audio from it, so we're able to bring this to you. But the entirety of this game will be shown in tape delay as soon as we get it uploaded and get back into Alexandria. First down and 10 from the 17-yard line. We know it's frustrating to a lot. Ball is on the ground. The Trojans have it. Jason Blackwell is going to fall on it as that ball came out, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered for this Ash Trojan team. And, uh, you know, I guess that means that we've spoiled a lot of people by bringing you continuous video coverage. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, when we're at their, at their place, they dictate what we're able to do or not. So those of you back home shaking your head, then that's the, that's the reason. 5.54. Until halftime, Trojans dodged a bullet right there. Got to go down and get something going. They'll start from their 15-yard line. Yeah, Nelson caused a fumble there, and Blackwell recovered. I'll tell you what, that was more exactly what we needed. Two receivers to the near side, two to the top. Trojans now will go right to left. Play action to Lindsey, stepping up his feaster. He's got an opportunity to get out of there and avoids a sack. Only picks up a couple, but there is a... Young man for Karen Crow that has went down, and that's going to cause an official timeout, and you hate to see that from anybody. Looked like he got his hand banged up perhaps between a couple of helmets, but you don't want to speculate anything. That's why we take the cameras off uh, during, these, uh, during these injury timeouts and don't, don't show them. Everyone taking a knee. We're going to step away and take a 30-second break, minimum 30-second break. We'll do that when you're watching Ash Trojan football on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, the trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule Our your mobile next banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier. And we are back here to the Crow Dome, they like to call it down here. What do you have on that injury, Coach? Ja'Kalen Roy, it looks like he might have a, might have a rib. It looks like it's, he's holding his, his side there. He might have took a shot to Looking the around the way, Tioga big, 58 to nothing last night. Pineville up 13 to nothing. Buckeye up 14 to 12. And uh, that's a look at the scores from around the way. Thanks to Coove, who's making some graphics out there. You remember James Cuvier, big friend of the program here. Feaster. Going back over the top. That time it's complete. Breaking out of a, a tackle, but not enough. And out of the way, and those Trojans will hustle down the field. First down, Alexandria from their own 36-yard line is where they will scrimmage. 19-yard gain there. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. That's that couple of inches off that the Trojans were early on. Handoff goes to Lindsey now. Looks for some running room. Cuts back inside beautifully. Spun around, though, and will be dropped down for a pickup of five yards. And the Trojans just rapidly getting to the line of scrimmage. This is what we're going to have to see if it pays off in that second half. Mingo to the near side. He is there with a couple of others. That is Jimmy Duncan also with him. Mingo goes to the far side, and they do that little inside toss to him. Oh. Mingo trying to get to the outside, but there's going to be a flag that is down in the backfield. And uh, 
see what they're going to bring here. That was thrown. Illegal, Illegal shift. shift is what it's going to be called, and that's not going to negate a Trojan first down. It'll be five yards and repeat second down. 4.49 to go until halftime. Trojans trailing this one 20 to 7. I tell you, we had the momentum there. That was actually a five yard gain on first down. Should go back to. From a first down to second and 10, that's a, a big swing in this one. Clock starts to run. We sit at 446. 446 to go here until halftime. See what I did there? I like that. I like that. Three to the near side, one to the top. Snap is back. Feaster quickly over there, and that's complete. That gets all the yardage back, plus some, and going down the sideline now. Off and running towards the end zone, but pushed down at the 25-yard line. Look to be E.J. Scott or Darius Washington over there. We'll see if that was smaller of the two, I believe, is, is E.J. Scott. Yeah, Quickly up to the line go the Scott. Trojans. Ooh, where are they... Pushed him out of bounds, they say, at the 36-yard line. But 4.32 to go until halftime. Feaster's got his Trojans on the march here. Gives it gives it up the middle to JT. JT's going to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. They'll give him a yard, if anything. 4.22, Trojans definitely need to get something going into the end zone here. They are rapidly back up to the line of scrimmage. No time for instant replays. In this game, two receivers to the near side. That's Jimmy Duncan alongside of Jalen Johnson. Two to the top, back to pass goes Feaster. He's getting pressure, but that's that little inside swing. Domingo spun around, still going, and on his feet will be brought down, but he's going to pick up six on that one. It'll be third down and three. Domingo. Darius Washington. Was it Washington? Yes, sir, Darius Washington. Darius has it. Yeah. There. There's Mingo to the near side. He's on the inside slot. He's there with Jimmy Duncan and Jalen Johnson. A lot of confusion out of that uh, Karen Crow team. And I'm telling you, like a fighter trying to get to the bell coach in this one uh, as they got the Trojans have them on their heels, a la that first drive. Yes, yeah, very good here. And, and getting the momentum back right before half, you know, where we punch this one in, bring it to 20 to 14 right before half, that'd be very good. You dodge a bullet with the turnover down inside your own 20-yard uh, line, get it at the 15, and off and going. You know, create the turnover. Indeed, that's, that's, that's correct. And it was a great job of going and getting after it. Again, audio only per Karen Crow's, uh, their rules on there, unable to do that. And then that's uh, what we'll honor. 20-7 to 7 in this one, 336 remaining Trojans have it third down and three. From uh, right on the 30-yard line of Karen Crow. Tell you, Doug, I don't know if the line can hold them, but, but what is happening with, with Washington and Scott on that far side, if they can do the pump and go, if they could give them time, because that back shoulder pass, that short screen has been there all night. Yeah, they're jumping. They're jumping that coverage on there. Three again to the near side. Lindsay in the backfield with Feaster. Third down and three. Feaster, snap throw over there is complete. Trying to spin out of a tackle and does. Spinning around, trying to get clear. Slung around and out of bounds. But that's a first down for your Ash Trojans. A 10-yard gain there. That's that, that's that stop route. You know he's throwing it before he makes the, makes the turn, catching it and positive yards. It has been there a lot for the Trojans as uh, backing off. Now coming up a little more in coverage is that Karen Crow defense. To the near side is Duncan, Johnson, and Mingo. It's explosive, and that's what explains that opening on the far side. Mingo goes the other way. There's that little touch pass. Mingo spinning around. He's got five out of it. They'll give him four. They'll make it second down, 320. So plenty of time for your Trojans to continue this drive that was, dare I say, much, much needed. Yeah, I must have grabbed him on his, on his collar there. I thought he might have grabbed a face mask, but two referees right there, two officials right there. Spinning around now and ready to go. Handoff up the middle to JT, and that went nowhere fast. Even a loss of a couple of yards on it. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I don't, there's nothing wrong with that because you try, you try. We've been spreading the field, try to pop it up, up the middle, and Karen Crow was just there and made a great defensive play. Jalen now comes off the field. Feaster's got Lindsey in there. To the far side, he's got Scott and Mingo. Near side Trojans go with Duncan. And Darius Washington as Jalen is on the sideline. 
Play action, stepping up, going to be dropped in the backfield, and that's just big-time work by that Karen Crow defense. My goodness, firing through there was number 33, and he was the one that was hurt earlier. Yeah, Good to see him back in there, but just not on that play. Yeah, exactly. Fourth down and 12, the Trojans had second down and five, and it went uh, lost yardage on two consecutive. It looks like Alexandria may be taking the time out. We'll take it with them and be back in 30 seconds. You're watching Ash Trojan Football on 446 Sports. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. And we are back here. Karen Crow, Louisiana, Doug Gann alongside of Nick Magnano. And uh, fourth down and 12. What was second down and five a couple of plays ago has been some great defensive work. The Trojans are going to stay out there. The one thing that they did was, uh, was keep some chaos from happening down inside their red zone. Got the turnover, but really have to pay this drive off. You've got to the near side is Washington Mingo. And we'll see who else they have over here. Jimmy Duncan. With him, Jimmy Duncan's to the near side. That's going to put Mingo in, or uh, correction, that'll put Jalen in solo coverage on the far side. No, oh, that's four. E that e. is E.J. Scott, Scott e. on the Scott, far yeah. side. So Scott in man coverage. Back to pass is Feaser. Play action. That ball is knocked out of there, and that has a potential for a scoop and score, but they fall on it. Trojans got lucky, and, uh, and Feaster just got blindsided, and that's what we talked about yeah. was that play action or that pump fake and try to go down the field, but that backside pressure, Feaster was wide open. Yeah, the, the corner, you know, blitz from the, from the outside. Nobody, nobody on the backside to pick him up. And... Nope, and you call that the, the blind side. Feaster was turning and facing that right, and the Trojans, and uh, boy, the, from second and five to a, a turnover right there. Would have been a turnover on downs, however you want to call it. But that was officially marked a fumble. And that will have Karen Crow with the ball from their 30-yard line. Moving with 2.04 to go left to right. 20 to 7. The lead for Karen Crow in this one. And that was all in the first quarter. Yeah, it would have been nice to held the ball a little bit more on that on, this, on that drive. Snap is back. Babino quickly gets it out of there. That is complete to one of his favorite weapons. That's number 12 in Antoine Alexander. Or, or was that 13? 27-12. Buckeye now leads this one. And so Coach Ben and that group off and running at block. Yeah, Hall in the coverage there, forced him out of bounds. But, I mean, four-yard gain. Pitch and catch. Pitch and catch. Clock stopped as he stepped out of bounds. A minute 59 to go until halftime. And this is the one you have to keep Karen Crow out of the end zone because they do get it and they could possibly put the game away if they do a, an end and a beginning. Yeah. Trying to get a stop in the backfield, but slap it, slipping him out of that one and still falling away. But that's going to fall down for a Karen Crow first down. The ball will stop just to get the chains set momentarily. And now it is cranked back up and going. Yeah, 147, Mason. go ahead. Yeah, Mason there with a chance in the backfield. And he shakes him, shakes loose and forward with the tackle. Babino in the backfield. He's got Baptiste. Two to the near side, one to the top. Going left to right here. First down and ten. Rolls to the near side. Now looking back the oh, other way. Moves. Got a man wide open again, and that's complete. And that's uh, off to the 15, 10, 5 touchdown. And that's as big of a, of a gut punch as you could give. Johnny Martin gets that one. And that was some 60-plus yards on that big-time play. And of all the things you could have happen, that's not one of them. Yeah, he double moved there, and free safety's eyes are in the backfield, and and you know just happened to happen to get free there. Goodness gracious! And he runs from the far side of the field all the way across. It's such a slow developing play that you really have to have protection. But you got an athlete like Babino that just put the ball on the money. Yeah, stays out there at twenty-six to seven. Well, and another thing, Doug, he's rolling to his right, throws left-handed, so. I mean, you think you think that he's probably not going to be as accurate there, but that was right on the money. Let me tell you, I'm uh, I'm I'm drinking the uh, the proverbial Kool Aid there. This is uh, this chance Babino is the deal. Yeah, Brian sure. Kelly, get an offer down here. Yeah. 
I don't care yeah. if he can't drive yet. That's right. That's right. We can send old Frank Wilson over here, talk to him. Back to pass is Babineau. He's looking. He's lobbing that one into the backfield or into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Minute 24. The only good thing is that score was pretty quick, and the Trojans will have an opportunity to answer before the half. But, uh, my goodness, getting kicked uh, kicked in the throat here in this first half uh, as 7 to nothing Trojans took the lead, but it's 26 unanswered for the Bears of Karen Crow. Yeah, Doug, sometimes athletes make plays. And he did, and he's a, he's a ball player. And, and when, they, when they mark him down on there as an athlete, you know that he's going to be something special. And, and Coach, they might get to – I don't see them getting, getting tired. Look, he goes and gets the ball to kick. I think he might have caught the ball on that one too and is coming around. Yeah, hey, he, he, did, he did at least throw it to the, to the referee, to the official right there right. today. And you know, you know he's right on the money to it yeah, too. Yeah. He didn't overthrow him or anything. I mean, Trojans have been so close to plays, and Karen Crow has executed. That's the difference in a 26 to seven lead. That's right. That's right. I mean, it would be it'd be 21-14. I mean, one thing you know is that you never give up on these Trojans, no matter what that early deficit is. They make adjustments as well as anyone at halftime. Jalen Johnson, J.T. Lindsey, back at their 10 yard line, have their heels on the 10 as they go right to left away from that big scoreboard towards the school here at Karen Crow High School. Great to see a touchdown return here. Watch Babineau with a little squib. He likes to do it. No, he, he puts that one back. Oh, that goes under the legs of JT. And it's going to find its way into the end zone, and that actually worked out well for the Trojans as that ball will come out because if JT picked it up right there, it would have been inside the 10, and, and you could have really had some, some trouble. I don't know that that Karen Crow defense is going to get tired. They have uh, they've been out. Uh, that offense has taken taken the heat off of them. Even though a lot of the players are going going both ways, you see Babineau coming to the near side, and he'll stay out on the field, favoring that left leg just a little bit. But the left arm seems to be just fine. Yeah, yeah. And at seven, you know, Cameron Shapiron is just. I mean, he, he's playing just as much, it seems like. What a battle here on the far side of the near sideline. It's Jalen Johnson on Babineau, and Jalen's got him beat. Over the top to Jalen, wide open. He's got a slide, and he misses that one, and underthrown from Feaster. <clears throat> Cramps for Mingo as he'll hobble off the field. You know, I'll tell you, Doug, I think the back judge got in the way. Do you? I think so. I think, I think he got in the way. I think he had to pause. I and, mean... Jalen went right by Babineau and had him by five or ten yards, and Babineau looks to the sideline and says, now nah, I'm good, and he waves off somebody, and here comes to the near side Marquise Butler. First time that we've seen Butler in this game, and uh, again, you got to see if you can run your guys past a tired and winded Babineau. <laughs> Second down and ten, a minute 16 to go. Feaster calls for the ball. Handoff goes to Lindsey. But that interior line of Karen Crow is just Johnny on the spot. Cameron Cyprian in there again. And yeah, the right Trojans, there. yeah, Trojans not in a hurry to get to the line of scrimmage now. Yeah, yeah, I think I think now you run clock. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I think now you run clock and get this first down. Yep. You're trying to get to the bell yeah. uh, is all you're doing, the halftime bell, trying to get there. And, and uh, already you're down by 19 in this one. Karen Crow does get the ball to start things off. 12 seconds, 11 and 10 now on the play clock, and I believe the Trojans will take it down as far as they can, 7 and 6, and then get a timeout. Yeah. We'll leave it right here as they do. Timeout. Not the yep. They called a timeout right before it went off, and Bachman was right by the side judge and says, okay, timeout. We're going to leave it right here, as that'll be just enough to say, hey, look, let's try to – Maybe do a little screen or a draw and try to bust something big. If not, we'll kick it out of there and try to live again another day. Buckeye up 33-12 to 12 in that game at block. The Rebels 13, Winfield 6. So we're looking for the Rebels to get, uh, to get a victory there. Second quarter in both of those games as we are here. And uh, both of our teams there are hanging in there and winning, and the Trojans are going to need a little bit of work on their side of it to get things going. 
Boy, Karen Gross had the answers ever since that first drive. We went right down the field. Of course, they answered, and then they pretty much have had the, the best of us since. Look, you know, they call baseball a game of inches, but this certainly has been. Balls that have dropped right in the hands of Karen Crow have been just outside the outreached, uh, outstretched hands of the Trojans. Saved one on this earlier one, but uh, goodness. Third down and 10. Trojans have two receivers to the top. Watch for some sort of a screen or a draw right here, just trying to keep the clock going. Feaster looking over that middle screen in and out of the hands of Jalen Johnson. Had a first down, but it's dropped and just uh, zero continuity and chemistry in this offense right now as the punt team makes their way out onto the field, and you've got to get it away. Your number one goal is get that ball out of there. Yes, sir. And they got number four, Johnny Martin, going back for the return. Who had that big touchdown earlier um, on the play, and so we know how fast he is and explosive. 21 seconds to go. Until halftime, Trojans trying to get their good snap. Kick is up in its way, and that's the best one of the night. Yeah, that's a good point. Got to bounce to take a Trojan roll, and it does. Don't down touch to the Don't touch it. Make them. Right, make them stop it up. Yeah, Clock still ran good. 10.7 to go. And uh, ever since the uh, the little wide receiver screen pass, it's been all Karen Crow in this one, 26 to 7. They lead it 10 seconds before the half. Again, tape delayed because of the rules here. On the campus of Karen Crow, Coach Corville does not allow live streaming from the grounds. And so that's, uh, that's one of the things that uh, Chuck was telling us that his guys run there telling us, that, nope, you can't do it here. And, uh, you know, I get it. It's, it's, it's his place. And they were in the semifinals last year, and he can do what he wants to do. That's right. That's right. But you'll be able to watch it in its entirety on Saturday morning. If it is, grab you a, a cup of coffee and, and hang out with us here on this Saturday morning as you're watching it. Snap is back to Baptiste. He's looking over the top. There's no taking a knee in this thing. That ball is, they're calling it complete down the line to the 20 with three seconds to go. Baptiste threw it up, ran down there and caught it himself. No, he, he's not done that yet. But uh, first and 10 down with 3.3 to go. Did they mark him in bounds? If they did, that'll run the clock as soon as it's reset, but it doesn't look like, looks like he was out of bounds. So uh, watch for something big. The Trojans have got to avoid that knockout punch right here. Yeah. This is the opportunity for them to stick around in this one. Yeah, Dyson on that play, high pointed it. Braylon Clark had to. Coach. So impressed with Dyson, who was a defensive yeah. back last year. Here comes the throw over the top. It's just that fade. And they're not going to, yeah, they're going to call the pass interference. So you're going to get an untimed down. Yeah. But you know what? I ain't mad at that. No, no. no, no. And, uh, and, and that's, that's what you do. You, you've had success throwing it to your receivers who have went up and over the smaller quarterbacks of the Trojans. Be one untimed down here as the clock does expire. But uh, yeah, they're going to call holding against the defense. And, uh, and, again, they do give them one on time down. So, zero, zero, zero on the clock. But the 26 for Karen Crow and the 7 for Alexandria tells the tale in this first half. We are uh, slowly, methodically moving through this game. Don't think we're going to make it to Cafe Josephine before they close at 10 o'clock on a Friday night. No, nah, we'll be hitting Sonic or Wendy something. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Open the leap. The Waffle House or something. Got to be you. careful of this one, a defensive penalty, and the Trojans will take their last time out because, again, at this point, you really can't take it into the uh, into the locker room with you. We're going to leave it right here. We'll stay through this one. And uh, Coach started out about as good as it could. The Trojans in control and marched right down the field, and then, uh-oh. Let's see, yeah, tearing up his keys. We'll go back through those when we go through some of the highlights. Boy, somebody turned the fan on or something because that feels nice. Whatever, whatever they opened the door did something. Yeah. Coach, you, you go back and look at this right here. The Trojans will be kicking to start the second half. Down by 19 right now. So uh, you, you're just you're three scores down in this one. You cannot give up anything here. Not, the, Karen Crow, you've not seen them with any sort of really of a kicking game right, in right. this one. They missed the one extra point that they had, and it's going into the wind. As you see, the flags atop those big, tall uprights. Yeah, yeah, south wind now. And it is, uh, I tell you what, you win this play. Right. 
Ash, the Trojans deep, win this play and get a little momentum going back. Win this play. Batiste comes out onto the field. He's got Johnny Martin, who's been a big player in this one. He's got Cameron Cyprian off to the left side. Three receivers to the near side. The one to watch for is Austin Dyson. He's a receiver. Watch that fade going over to Dyson. He's done as good job of going up and getting a ball as anybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the legs of Bavino. Here comes motion. Play action there. Coming back. Good pressure from the Trojans, but Bavino equally as efficient getting out of there. Throws this one over the middle. Got to be knocked down. Oh, wow. And it's caught into the end zone, and uh, you put every bit of that on Chance Babineau and the magic feet that he's able to get around. And uh, worst fears realized, that one goes up in the air and coming back and getting it was Kendrick Bernard. And uh, You know, he did everything wrong there. Everything. I mean, he runs across. He, th he throws it back across the field. The receiver's running away from him. He does everything wrong, and they still make Throws it Throws it right over the middle, yeah, and it exactly. could have been picked off and taken the other way. However, Bernard pulls it down, and uh, I'm, I'm telling you, that's why it's the Crow Dome, because it's magic inside here, and this, whatever mythical building this is, they're doing it 32-7. to seven. Extra point is up, and it is no good, and that will bring this first half to an end. But it has been first half in a big way for these Karen Crow Bears. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in about five minutes, and we'll give you some highlights on here. But uh, big shout out to those folks that make things happen for us um, to, to be able to get here and do this. You're watching Ash Trojan Football on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin, an idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Appliance Parts Company in Alexandria has all your major appliance parts needs. We sell parts to all major appliances as well as new appliances, including window units, chest, and upright freezers. Appliance Parts originally opened its doors on Lee Street in 1972, and we're now open at a new location on Memorial Drive to serve you better. Stop by, say hey to our crew, and check out our awesome holiday gifts. Appliance Parts, 2208 Memorial Drive in Alexandria next to Target. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday from 9 till 12. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, the trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, 
employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call. Buying car insurance for the first time can be overwhelming. Do you have enough coverage? Are you paying too much? Will someone be there for you when the unexpected happens? I'm Jason Hawk with Farm Bureau Insurance. You may think it's easier online, but why wait? We're here to help you make sure you're covered. When it comes to car insurance, we have the answers, and we may have rates that save you money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK or online at talktohawk.com and let us help you protect your biggest investments. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Appliance Parts Company in Alexandria has all your major appliance parts needs. We sell parts to all major appliances as well as new appliances, including window units, chest, and upright freezers. Appliance Parts originally opened its doors on Lee Street in 1972, and we're now open at a new location on Memorial Drive to serve you better. Stop by, say hey to our crew, and check out our awesome holiday gifts. Appliance Parts, 2208 Memorial Drive in Alexandria next to Target. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday from 9 till 12. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sport. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, the trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, 
and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call. Buying car insurance for the first time can be overwhelming. Do you have enough coverage? Are you paying too much? Will someone be there for you when the unexpected happens? I'm Jason Hawk with Farm Bureau Insurance. You may think it's easier online, but why wait? We're here to help you make sure you're covered. When it comes to car insurance, we have the answers, and we may have rates that save you money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK or online at talktohawk.com and let us help you protect your biggest investments. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. We're back to halftime here in Karen Crow, Louisiana, and uh, it has been all Golden Bears here in the first half, save for that opening drive of the Trojans. You saw the coin toss, and in true Karen Crow fashion tonight, they won that too. <laughs> uh, won the toss, elected to defer. Trojans went right down the field, and you're like, all right, here we go. This is going to be one of those games. And uh, 32 unanswered later, including that miraculous little throw from uh, Babineau. But it was the scramble that did it, Coach. And we talked about Ch Chance Babineau all week long. And I'm telling you, uh, a kid that goes as a freshman for 1,000 yards receiving last year. And, uh, and he's just been all world. 300 total yards for Karen Crow in the first half. And uh, why don't you take a look at some of the stats for the Trojans in the first half. Yeah, JT Lindsay led with the uh, running. Uh, of course, he only he had nine rushes for 14 yards. These are unofficial. He had nine rushes for 14 yards. Mingo had one rush for four yards. And then Feaster uh, had, I mean, I'm, I'm counting two sacks, but he had he had four rushes for, for minus three yards. So, you know, so the total. Trojans have about 10 yards rushing based yeah. on if I did that in my head right. 19 minus three, so 16 yards. 16 you yards, know, 16 said. yards, okay. Passing, um, he was uh, 11 for Feaster is 11 for 21, 131 yards. Uh, does have the one the one touchdown. And like I said, this is unofficial, unofficial stats. Um, and then on receiving, uh, Johnson had one for minus two. Um, EJ Washington had two for 31. Scott had four for 61, and Mingo had four for 51. And then we had. Uh, and we had 30 yards and penalties. Once again, unofficial. We'll go back and watch the watch the film over the weekend and, and get these stats official. Like you said, Karen Crow, 300 total yards. Um, I'll try to get their stats, you know, um, from the from their radio broadcast on on the the individual stats as well, so we can we can talk about those. But uh, on defense, I mean, one positive you have the you have the fumble, you have the forced fumble by um, the forced fumble by by Nelson. You know, the recovery by, uh, by Blackwell. A couple of pass deflections. You know, you had one sack by Walker. I'll tell you what, that's impressive yep. <laughs> to, sack, to sack six there. And then, um, but we have, we're, we're led. And unfortunately, Doug, whenever you're led in tackles by, by one of your corners, you know, with five, Raylan Hall, you know, that kind of that says it all right there. Makes for a tough, uh, yeah, 
that that, that makes things tough to say the least. Uh, 706 to go in here and let's look back at your why not stop keys to the game and let's see uh maybe if we can figure out the the reason behind this 32 to 7 deficit here at halftime what do you have well i'll tell you i mean <laughs> we came out just fast just number one start fast you know put and them they on did their that. heels seven yep. nothing <laughs> yep seven nothing and then 32 unanswered um one thing we talked about establishing the run and once again you don't have to we don't have to out time have have the ball longer in the time. Time of possession does not always have to be in your favor, okay? But if it's quality possessions and you can mix the pass with the run, okay, then, then you could at least keep them off the field some. So we were trying to establish the run, and obviously we did not with, you know, 16, 16 yards, yards rushing. Right, right. And then, I mean, the reason why number three, I talked about the eye discipline on all three levels is, I mean, just the – chance last year number seven who was our quarterback not even knowing this chance but just seeing you know a few of the a few I think I got to watch maybe 15 minutes of his highlights and I mean you never know when the play's over that's and correct you never know when the play's over well and that happened on that first play from scrimmage on the little wide receiver screen to Dyson yep. and Dyson throws it down the field and the young man that got it we got our first look at Kashmir Batiste on that play and uh, and all he does is roll and spin and twist around. Yeah, Dyson's the one that, that threw it there. He rolled and spun and, and, and did all that and rolled over the Trojan defender, never touched the ground, and got up. Next thing you know, it, it's about a 70-yard pass and catch. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, if that's Babineau throwing that to him, if that's not Dyson making that throw, it's probably on the money because he was so – he had to stop. Right. He had to stop for the for the to catch the ball. Uh, and then – from the first play that they had to the very last play they had on the attack, I mean on the offense, I mean this he rolls out like we talked about, does everything that you're not supposed to, but when yep. you're athletic and the defense you're playing against is tired, you know they're kind of some Johnny Manziel type stuff, you know. And we'll we'll break all of that down in our first edition of the show, Coach Speak. That is coming up Sunday night. Scheduled for 6 o'clock, probably going to creep it out a little bit earlier to, to get ready for that other game that kicks off at 6.30. So we'll, uh, we'll probably move that time up to 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock is when we'll do that, and that'll get us out of there and back home uh, to watch those Tigers travel over to Orlando to take on the Knowles and, uh, and try to come back from that one-point game. That was the game that the Tigers were getting blown out of and made that miraculous comeback in it. We'll see if the Trojans have... That type of a miraculous comeback in it. We know that they will be prepared to come out in this second half. They will continue to go fast. They have to now. They're down by four scores. I'm predicting 35-32 when we get out of here tonight. Will it happen? I don't know. We'll see about that when we come back. You're watching Ash Trojan Football. It's halftime on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Appliance Parts Company in Alexandria has all your major appliance parts needs. We sell parts to all major appliances as well as new appliances, including window units, chest, and upright freezers. Appliance Parts originally opened its doors on Lee Street in 1972, and we're now open at a new location on Memorial Drive to serve you better. Stop by, say hey to our crew, and check out our awesome holiday gifts. Appliance Parts, 2208 Memorial Drive in Alexandria next to Target. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday from 9 till 12. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, 
Look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. And we are back here in Crow, Louisiana. Doug in alongside of Nick Magnano. I think Nick went to go and find those uh, seafood boudin balls that are down there in the hospitality room. Great uh, reception, at least up here. But, I mean, if you're going to treat us like they are on the field, at least they can do is provide some good food. And uh, we expected uh, nothing less than the good hospitality up here in the booth. Uh, this Karen Crow team is fired up. They come out looking well-rested again. They put up 32 unanswered against your Trojans. Won the opening toss, elected to defer. Ash went down and scored. Those of you just joining us, remember this game will be shown in its entirety in the morning. We'll, uh, we'll have that tape-delayed version of it as Karen Crow's, Karen Crow's coach Corville says, you know, if, if the folks aren't going to come out to my games, I'm not going to stream them for you. You're not going to get to watch them live. And I, I can't sway, say that, uh, that, that I'm mad at that decision. I don't like it that we're unable to bring you the action on here. But, uh, you know, that's, that's rules. And we all have them, and we all live by them. A minute six to go until they wrap things up in this first half. Uh, Looking ahead next week, uh, we got the Coach, Coach Bachman show on Thursday night. Don't forget, if you like football, hit on over to our YouTube page and hit that subscribe. We went over 1,000 subscribers for the season. Hit the notification bell. That lets you know when we are going live, and we do that 10 times a week. 10 times a week we go live, uh, and we are very grateful that you are here. Coach? Yeah, I got some stats here from Karen Crow. Uh, kind of surprising, actually. Uh, Chance Babineau had three rushes for actually negative two yards, but he did. He was nine for 13 for 233 yards passing, and then Austin Dyson was one for one for 70 yards. And then on the receiving, uh, Kashmir Baptiste is two for 131. Dyson is four for 85, and Kendrick Bernard is three for 45. So, um Kendrick um, caught that pass at the end for the touchdown to yeah. number 13. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, uh, number, uh, then they have pretty much similar to us. They have uh, JT, uh, you know, and then Feaster has JT. They're saying JT has uh, 52 yards. So I must, uh, must have something wrong on mine here. I have to look back unless they don't count. I don't know if they count, the, but we'll look at that. And then Baptiste, um, on the um, Kashmir Baptiste is 8 for 37 on Russian. Joni Martin, 1 for 10. Landon Norris, 1 for 2. And then um, and then total total yards, they have they have 350 total yards. To uh, how many? To 149. They've run 28 plays. We've run 39 plays. We have 12 first downs. They have 13. Uh they're saying the rushing total of 19 rushes for 33 yards, and then uh, they're saying 14, 14 for 47. So we're, so we've actually held their rush, their running game to 47 yards. So yeah. you're saying there's a chance. Yes. yes. There you go. Well, the only chance tonight has been Chance Babineau. Yeah. <laughs> he has been, uh, he has been electric, to say the least. It's been a lot of fun watching him. The Trojans, you know, will make adjustments. They'll go fast. They'll get there just a, a few inches away. And uh, you know that Coach Mercer is going to draw some things up defensively for this uh, this Trojan defense. Bachman and that offensive group will be ready to go offensively. Uh, my goodness, though, what an electric first half. 32 unanswered. Coach, it was a, a minute or so left in the first half, and we're saying, okay, it was 20 to 7. Don't go down and get that, that play. The Trojans caused the fumble. March down. Big play, 26. Then another miraculous play right at the end, 32 to seven. They score a couple of touchdowns after being after getting 20 in the first quarter. They put together a couple right there within the last minute of the game of the first half, and uh, just about as disastrous of the end to a half as you will find. Mesh teeing things up, getting ready to go, and um, waiting for the Bears to make their way back out onto the field. 32-7 to seven again. Tape delayed in this one if you're watching this one back. Um, so far in the first half, it's not been that battle, but, but stick around in this one because you'll get to see 
how the Trojans came back and won this game when the video hits tomorrow. Coach, quit laughing. No, I like it. I like it. Right? Uh, There's the kick, you... and it goes deep, and that could be That's good. back to the one-yard yeah. line. So Mesh with a good kick, but coming to the near side, spinning around and going down there is Johnny Martin. Marion Ford on the tackle there. First time that we've called Ford's name tonight and looks to be about the, well, now they're moving out to the 20, let's see where they'll put him at the 21-yard line maybe, and that'll be the worst starting field position to, on the night. To the 20-yard line, we'll see what that Trojan defense is do. They've got to come out, and they've got to get a three and out or a big turnover right here. They do have the one turnover in tonight's contest. See what a, once again, excellent kickoff by Chan there. Give us a chance to cover it. Babineau has Batiste in the backfield with him. Babineau calls for the ball. Snap throw over to the far side, and it's complete. And uh, out there making a big play. Good job going in there and getting it. That is Landon Norris on the receiving end of that one. Yeah, Jaden Lewis and uh, Jalen Kirk on the tackles there. Come up just a quick five-yard um, completion. Now to the near side comes Austin Dyson. He's being covered up by Carrick Gaines, and that's a battle that you'll want to watch because Austin Dyson can flat go up and get the ball. Yeah, he's been, he's been tough. Second down and five out from the 25-yard line as Karen Crow moves left to right. They're headed to the beautiful neighborhood that is off to the right. Back under center goes Babineau. It's going to be a handoff to the near that's side it. and crashing up out of the backfield doing big work is Jason Blackwell, who was in the... The backfield as quick as the football was from that safety blitz. Boy, third and five here. Let's get them off. Win this series. Win this series. Get some momentum. Yep, you made reference to winning that last untimed down. Yeah. Trojans didn't do it. Need to get three and out. That's the way to get things going is to turn it around right here. Still disappointed in the crowd support from Karen Crow here. Not a lot of, not a lot of Karen Crow Golden Bear fans here. Coming to the near side is Babineau. He's going to have the edge, and he's going to have the first down, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds. And uh, we'll hop over the bench where they look at the plays, and uh, that's just Babineau, and that'll get him into positive rushing territory that he hadn't been in before tonight. Yeah, Kendrick Gaines on the on the there. Just we didn't hold contain. We didn't hold contain on the outside, and he ends up play, you know getting getting to the boundary. And I tell you, I, it always it's remarkable how they make those runs on the short side of the field. Out to the 45, they go first and 10. Big shout out to Michelle and the gang at Polo and Plaids in Alexandria. They supplied the neat gear for us this year. We'll tell you a little bit more about that right after this play. Bringing in motion is Bernard. It's going to be that inside wide receiver handoff. Bernard's got to cut it back up the middle, but coming up and making a big stop. Normally, that's Blackwell. That's Ford that came up, so good to see Omarion Ford come up and make that one. But Polos and Plaids, they are over there to the left side of Max as you're going over there. Craig's Cleaners is right there in that little shopping area. Papa John's is close to that area in Pizza Hut right off of Jackson Street. If you're looking for any school uniforms at all, go by there and see if you want one of these cool, lightweight, fishing-style shirts with your team name on it and logo on there, go by there and check it out. Polos and Plaids, the official uniform partner of 446 Sports. Second down and nine. From the Golden Bear 47 yard line, 940 and counting, and they are milking that clock. Trojans just have to get them off the field. That's a holds on to that one and throws it out to the flat, and that is complete to Bernard again. I don't know that uh, Babineau meant to throw it like he did, but uh, nothing ceases to amaze me about that young man. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he's going to tuck it and run, you know, follow the pulling guard around and just, you know, just flicks it out to the to the wing back there and first down. Pineville extends their lead 20 to six over the visiting Tigers of Winfield's coach Bryant Bell and that rebel offense and defense looking to get into the win column to start the season. First down and 10 from the Trojan 39. Snap throw once again, it is complete. And uh, it just really seems like Karen Crow now is doing as that was Cyprian doing what the Trojans tried to do with those quick little passes. And uh, not a bit of pep in the step from that Trojan defense coach at all. Yeah, I mean, you put him on the island there, and I mean, he's just quick. He's, he's big, he's fast, takes three people to get him down. Blackwell came and, and finished him off there, but second and one. 
Yeah. Looks just like Chance Babineau's getting warmed up in this one. Nine-yard pickup down to the Trojan 30-yard line. It'll be second down and one, eight and a half to go here in the third quarter, 32-7. Karen Crow leads this one. Hand off to the left side and uh, just tripped up as Kashmir Batiste was going to be off to the races. And you hear the, the opposing radio folks that uh, were ready for the touchdown call on that one, but it is a first down. Yeah, Jason Blackwell, shoestring tackle there. I tell you, that little scat back, little scat back Baptiste, he almost broke it. Looked like Sharon Carey used to run for LSU, rule number two. Buckeye rolling up block 39-12 to 12 in that one. It's in the third quarter. That fast-paced Buckeye Panther offense is rolling under head coach Ben McLaughlin. Yeah, they bounced, bounced back from the Jamboree last week and doing well. Indeed, first down and 10 from the 26-yard line of Alexandria. 32-7, to 7, 740 remaining here. Been a good five-minute drive for Karen Crow. And now trying to go over the top for all of it. In and out of the hands, and great work defensively. Have to see on the far side who that Rowland is. Hall. Looks like Rowland Hall. Hall. Yeah, Rowland Hall did played that perfectly. Played that, turned his head last minute. You know, well, he looked at the eyes and the hands, yeah. and that's what wasn't done in the first half. Right, that's it. That's it. Second down and ten, and you go back to the very first part of this drive. About a minute into it, Trojans had an opportunity on third down to get off the field, but the legs of Chance Babineau. Got them out of it, and now they're deep into Trojan territory at the 26-yard line. Have chewed up another three or four minutes, 728 remaining here in the third. Big lead for Karen Crow. A little swing into the backfield, and it's complete. Blackwell's got to come up and make a tackle and does. And they will mark him down at the 22-yard line. So Blackwell flying to the ball from his safety spot. But again, you talk about your corners leading in tackles. You don't want your secondary leading in tackles at all. Your line and your linebackers need to do that. Yeah, yeah, your free safety. I mean, now he, he just, he, he now has seven tackles. But I'll tell you what, he he's who you're going to look at in the film and, and talk about how he didn't quit. Didn't That's right. Stop. Flies to the ball. Third down and six. 6.54 to go. Babino under center. Handoff goes to the fullback. He cuts to the outside and uh, is an Aiden Walker tackle away from getting there. But here come the rest of the Trojans and another Karen Crow, Golden Bear, first down, down to the 10-yard line. So depending on where they mark it, maybe first and goal. And uh, and Karen Crow, methodically, like one of those MMA fighters, just choking you out. They landed a lot of body blows to the leg and to the, the torso early, and now they're just laying on you and choking you. Yeah, Blackwell, I was afraid that was going to be a horse collar, but he actually just had the jersey to slow him down, and then White and, and, um, and Ray... Came in to finish them off. Ball is marked on the 10-yard line, so the yard markers lay down. The chains do. Just the down marker stands up. It's first and goal from the 10. Babineau back to pass. He's rolling to his left. Now looking deep. Going to look for a oh. wide-open receiver. Just wide open. And I have seen too much of the busted coverages and wide-open receivers, and that's Kashmir Batiste. And how do you let him go, Coach? How do you let him go into the end zone, stand there? Well, everything goes to the left. I mean, he's even he, he rolling that way. And, and to be honest with you, four was wide open, you know, at first when he made the break. And I was wondering why he didn't throw it to him. It was because the play was designed to come backside to to um, to put Baptiste. But 38-7, and they trot Blanchard out there one more time and uh, just doing whatever they want to do on this Karen Crow offensive side. Took off five minutes, 56 seconds, and they quickly rushed number 55, Dejon Williams, back out on the field to give them 11. Snap is down. Hold, kick is up, and that extra point is good. 39-7, to and what an ovation for the extra point that was made. We're going to take our first break. First break of the third quarter. My goodness, comes after a big drive from Karen Crow. You're watching Astrogen Football on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Hey, 
And we're back to Karen Crow, dug in alongside of Nick Magnano. And um, 5.56 on that drive. And uh, said that Karen Crow started with their worst field position of the night. But all they do is go 80 yards in roughly, let's say, six minutes. And it was uh, the legs of Chance Baptiste that got him out of it in the first quarter there, or in that, that first third down that the Trojans, you thought, with 11 minutes to go in this third quarter, said, all right, we're going to stop right here. Here we come. We'll go down and score. Instead, it's 39 unanswered for Karen Crow. Yeah, you really was, you know, hoping that with that starting at the 20. Yeah. <coughs> Baptiste squibs this one down the middle. Trojans are going to have to fall on it. you got to pick it up, and it is picked up oh. there. And often, often running out to the 41-yard line is Jimmy Duncan. Duncan picks that one up, and we'll see what the Trojans are able to do. Now is a point where you got to start working on what you're going to put on film right. against a for a St. Thomas Moore team to, to see as the Trojans will travel back down 49 to the Lafayette area next Friday night to take on the Cougars of St. Thomas Moore. Then you might be in the, in the situation here where you're like, hey, let's win the second half. You know, let's, you know, we'll, we'll get a victory like that. You know, scout score them this half. But, uh, but got to get some positive plays here going forward. So I said 42-39 is what <laughs> I'm expecting the final to be in this one. Trojan's going to battle back. Uh, my goodness, I'm ever the optimist, uh, but it is waning a little bit in this game because of the effort. You know, we talked about could Karen Crow get, wow, the first drive, one drive, and we're at the six-minute hydration timeout. Uh, wow is all I can say about that. We talked about could Karen Crow, would Karen Crow get worn down? They've got players playing both ways. Could the Trojans' fast-paced offense handle that? All we've seen is the thing go the other way, and the Trojans are walking around hands on hips. Yeah, and, and when, when you're getting pushed around, when you are the one pushing the, the people, you know, the other team around, that just gives you that moment, that gives you that strength, that gives you <laughs> that stamina. And uh, I tell you, they have slowed this, this game down to a, I mean, to a crawl, and everything was positive going forward. I mean, that was 80 yards, like you're talking about, six minutes, but well, just, just under six minutes. And I tell you what, if you want to, you know, if you want to, you know, preserve your guys for four quarters, I mean, that's the way you do it. Well, uh, it's going to be an interesting, interesting Thomas Bachman show Thursday night. There was so much fire and enthusiasm into this uh, thing and still is. This one game does not a season make, but uh, this is as tough a start as you'll find Mingo Goes in motion, first drive, handoff goes to Lindsey. He's trying to get to the outside, now cuts back. He'll get to the 46-yard line, give him a pickup of six, make it second down and four. Yeah, good good, good run there, good start. Hey, getting the positive yards here. You know, Bachman's philosophy in this group over here, they're going to continue to go fast. You either come back and win or you you, you don't. You get uh, You give up some touchdowns the other way, but they are not going to lay down. They're not going to run the ball in this – Going to play their offense, and they're going to. They believe in their mind there is a route back to 42 points sure. in this game. Sure, incomplete pass there to, to Scott. Might be a little fatigue, you know. I mean that was on that was on point the whole first half. Threw that one a little behind. Didn't set his feet. Feaster didn't set his feet there. Washington to the near side as Feaster looks over to the sideline, switches Townsend from the right to the left. He does the same with Lindsey Mingo in the slot to the near side. No press coverage on the guys anymore. Lindsey goes out into motion. Now it's an empty oh, backfield. Gosh. And there's that inside screen. Lindsey's going to have to get. Uh, that's not Lindsey. And he's off that's, and going. That's Scott. 30, EJ Scott, 2010. Touchdown, Trojans. Touchdown, EJ Scott. 54-yard touchdown there by, from Feaster to Scott. Goodness gracious. Uh, first possession of the game. They go down and get a touchdown. 39 points later, they go down and get their next one. 39-13, Trojans will come on. And I told you, Coach, there's a way back to 42 in this one. Yes, there is. What did I just say? Did I say something about fatigue? Fatigue, you did. <laughs> they went right to the same play, put it on, and, and, and it was lights out. He was gone. Feaster now sets back in there, looking to go for, uh, go for two here. Feaster now scrambles. Throws that one out and almost not intercepted, but knocked away 
Tremendous job defensively, and that puts the Trojans down 26 in this one. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll see what the Trojans can do defensively. We'll do it all while you're watching 446 Sports as Trojan Football. We'll be right back. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, the trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. And we're back here. Trojans strike quickly. We've got a Karen Crow bear that is down on the turf over there. It is Chance Babino that is down. He was the one that went over there and knocked that one away. And you certainly hope for the best for that young man, without a doubt. He has been everywhere and in on every single play. He's kicked. He's punted. I don't know. Have they punted? Yes. Okay, yeah, he so he punted. Uh, he's, been, he's knocked that pass away defensively. He was out on coverage all night. And, uh, oh, by the way, he's thrown for 200-plus yards and now ran for positive yardage. So, uh, Chance Babineau. And you don't want anybody there, but your sophomore sensation, you want to see him get up. And they do. He's up and about. So, a big sigh of relief. I think, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I might be wrong. I don't know if they've punted tonight. I know he was warming up punting, but I don't know if he's they've actually punted one. But You know, such a good sight to see him jogging off yeah, the field definitely. and not walking around and, he expect that following this kickoff, he'll he'll try to get right back out there. If not, we'll see who is out. 26. Checking what we've got here. Bodie Van Dyke set to kick. Set to kick. Bodie Van Dyke is the young man they bring out there, and we've seen him work a lot on onside kicks. So uh, expect him. And the Trojans, when they do it, like to kick it right down the middle. And uh, the kicker a lot of times will do it. Those middle guys will come and just pound away at that interior line. And there it is. There's that onside kick that rolls around. It's Trojans there, have there. a chance for it. It's going to roll around. The PA announcer's calling and doing his best. So the Trojans say they <laughs> got him. And Van Dyke says absolutely they do. And we, Oh, and the official's calling it for Karen Crow right there. And Van Dyke. And everybody's going, what the... What's going on? You've got people doing going both ways with the hand signals. The only one that's going to matter is those in the stripes. And they'll re unpile the Trojans and say, now we've got it. I saw this movie once. Who's the white hat just pointed. <laughs> we've got the ball. Trojans get up out of the pile with the football, but it's Karen Crow football in this one. Blackwell has the ball. And so, uh, not sure about that one necessarily, but the main thing is, 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 is Babineau coming back out there. I have not seen if he's made his way back out, but the Van Dyke was like, well, wait a minute, we, we had the ball, and that's the, that's the whole uh, method of an onside kick. That's what happens when you get the ball back, you're supposed to have it, and, and we'll see on the replay when we look at it in the morning, go back and watch the video on there. We thought Blackwell came out of it, but he does not. Karen Crow has the football, 5.19 to go. They strangled off 5.56 the last time they had it. Trojan scored in 45 seconds. Looks like maybe. It's That's 11. 11 at quarterback. And the Wilson Trojans Landry. with a little extra pep in their step, and that is Wilson Landry Jr., yeah. another sophomore quarterback. And uh, two yards on the, on the pickup. We'll see. The Trojans. Boy, they dug themselves in such a hole, giving up three scores in a row. Well, 39 in a row, but three scores after it was 20 to uh, 7. And I don't know that the Trojans uh, got to keep fighting here down to 446 in the third. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna bring this down to almost zero on the play clock, I would think. Oh, absolutely. And they're looking at one because there's one down there as they look. Handoff goes to the uh, up the middle, that is Norris, Landon Norris that carries that and again a crucial third down play that looks like getting set to check in is number 44 Kelvin Elair. It looks like Nelson tripped him up on the when he came through there big third and three here, big third and four here 
Trojans have got to find some way. Send Blackwell on that uh, on that blitz. That's been pretty productive for them, 19 and 18. But it'll be under four minutes before Karen Crow snaps the football. Let's we'll see if Landry has the composure that uh, that Babino does. To oh, the near him. side, Stop. and that's not going to get there. It'll be fourth down. And remember, Babino's your punter too. Yeah. Kirk and and Blackwell on the tackle there. And keep that offense out there. I certainly believe you do. You may try a hard count or something, but actually lost a yard on that one. 339 and counting. Fourth down and two for Karen Crow from the Trojan 47-yard line. And this is as crucial of an opportunity as their head bend. Don't make sure you don't get a helmet into the, in the zone. That ball is – oh, and, and stop short of it. Got him. They're going to mark him at the 49, and that's not going to get it. Trojans will have the football. Thought they had it on the onside kick, but they'll have it out near midfield with another opportunity, and you've got to score quick and score big. There we go again. That was Kirk and Blackwell again. I mean, they are just all over the second half. Not sure what they're talking about here. No need for a measurement. It is clearly shy of the 45, and that was the line to gain. So the Trojans will, uh, will hop out. Beautiful moon that has made its way up over the visiting bleachers tonight you'll uh, you'll be able to see that in the morning when this uh when this game is aired just uh just beautiful that sits up over just to the left of where the band section is across the stadium from us and then like switching the stat sheet back to trojan's offense here here we go boys first down and 10 for the trojans can they go fast here Townsend goes in motion. He's sprinting out there. Here comes Feaster. He's got time. Going over the top, just overshoots his man and got to put a little bit of air under that because I'm telling you what, if they land that big shot, that rocks Karen Crow here and uh, and you start things going. Uh, but they didn't. It just, uh, you, you got to keep taking those shots. Yeah, I wonder if Johnson, I wonder if Jalen might have been able to leave his feet on that one, but... Quickly, the Trojans back to work and the defensive back just getting there. Mingo catches that one. Got to make a man miss again. Gets a couple of guys on him. Pick up of eight. It'll be third down and two. And the Trojans just shoot to the line of scrimmage here. Trying to keep an eye on where Babineau is. Looks to the sideline. He's up joking around, but does not have his helmet. Usually when they take your helmet, you're not coming back in the game. Yeah. Feaster looks to the sideline. 248 and counting. You do see 39-13 uh, on the scoreboard, but the Trojans can come back as good as anybody can. They trail this one by 26. Snap is back to Feaster. He pitches it back. Gets a good running start. And the first down out to the 40, and I mean had a shot at it, yeah, but just brought down at the 41 tackle away from getting to the house. Quickly the Trojans go. A seven-yard gain there for JT. Feaster picks up the low snap. Toss is over. Is that old 40 sweep for you? Is that what that was? No. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. We always had a fullback. But, yeah, yeah, Townsend's playing. So, so uh, <laughs> you got to count that. 210 <laughs> and counting in the third quarter. Trojans off and marching. Give him four second down and six. Hand off once again. Goes to Lindsey. Banging around looking oh, for yeah. contact and gets it all the way down to the 25-yard line. Yeah, Clock will stop momentarily to move the sticks. Tell you what, Doug, he might not have been happy with <laughs> With what I said, his rushing totals were in the first half because he has come out on a mission. Feaster, handoff. And that interior line that we talked about, Trojan offensive line starting to get a little bit of the better of it on this one. Talon Johnson on that one for three yards, maybe four. You don't have time for big sustained drive. That's why dead gum at that one from Jalen. You're just a few plays away from this game being closer, but it's not. Johnson in there at running back. Still, Tylan Johnson, the senior running back for the Trojans, he is the thunder to that thunder and lightning. 123 and counting 16 on the play clock. 120 on the game clock here in the third. Play action. Feaster back to pass. He's got a scramble. Tucks the ball down. Now he's throwing, trying to throw off his back foot. Got a man at jumping under it and making just a tremendous play defensively. I think it's hold. In the back, in the in the defensive backfield, I think it looks like they're uh, perhaps a defensive holding. We'll have to see the white hat and check that out. It'll be a big, big break for the Trojans there. That may have been what kept the play from happening. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, EJ Scott was held whenever he came across the back there. Be a big first down. 
Oh, Eagle Eye, Nikki Magnano there uh, doing things, doing great work, spotting that. In fact, it was second down and eight. Well, it shouldn't be a first down, huh? No, yeah, the, yeah they'll mark it now. There it's it is. They give us 10 yeah. yards, and yeah. it's first and 10. Inside the 15, down to about the 11. Is it marked on the 10? We'll have to see. No, it's out to the 11. Trojans can get a first down without benefit of the touchdown, but you want to get it. 105 to go, third quarter. Trojans trail big in this one, 39-13, but on the heels of getting their second consecutive touchdown. Feaster, hand off to Lindsey. Lindsey finds nowhere to go, and he finds it fast. Trojans need to get back up to the line of scrimmage quickly, and they do. Tell you what, seven there. That was uh, Cameron Spreon. He just, he beat... He beat Pearl through that through that gap there at Lindsay in the backfield. Chance Pavano has his helmet again. He's with that offensive unit. He will be back on the field, we expect. Yeah, he's he's walking around pretty solidly and looking to get back in there defensively even. Feaster back to pass, going into the far corner of it. Oh, one-handed catch, and we're looking, and that's calling it touchdown. Hey. My goodness, into the corner. That could be your Southern Air cool play of the game. We'll watch the instant replay. Follow it along on your screen there, and we'll do the same. BU Designs bringing you that instant replay. See if we have it. If it's uh, kind of slow on the back and just going there and going up and making a one-handed grab at it. Goodness gracious. We'll chop that up because there's an opportunity for that to be our Southern Air cool play of the game and not sure who was on the receiving end Mama of that Mingo. one. Was it a Mirion Mingo goes up and gets that one one-handed, and how about that one? Isn't that why y'all call him Mama? That's right, because every ball that's out there, he says, it's mine. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I even, oh, that's a great That move. wide oh. open and overshoots him, and now the Trojans will still be down by three scores. But uh, guys, hang on, don't go anywhere. This is going to be an Ball exciting start. last. Uh, Ball start. Yeah, they'll call the PAT still no good from that. They'll decline that. Well, can you on the false start? Time. Procedure on there, oh, yeah. Procedure. They didn't okay. blow the whistle beforehand, okay. so it is declined. Gotcha. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. An exciting finish is underway on 446 Sports. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier. Transactions are getting safer. And you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. Uh, getting ready, setting up, another onside kick perhaps. The Trojans, oh, thought they had that one, but ended up getting the, the three and out or uh, thereabouts. And Babineau was, was out, back deep to receive Kashmir Batiste and why not? You got 10 guys. Now, this is one of those that you don't mind throwing up that little pooch over that second line of defenders. You got 10 guys within 20 yards of the football. They're all waiting on the onside kick. You got to believe that Bodie is going to uh, put a leg into this and get it over that front group, they and then back. anything can happen. Avenue's back on the field here, second line. I don't here. know why you got him in there on Same kickoffs. Here. I agree. I agree. But that's why I'm in the booth. Here. Right. Van Dyke sets it up. He goes the other way with it. That's touched around, banged around. Trojans are going to have another opportunity got it, got it. for it. The Trojans have it. Looks like the Trojans. That was bounced around and falling on it. But again, at this point, who knows? And the Trojans, you can let the sideline tell you what happened on that one. No, he's point. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got it. Okay. He first pointed to the left. <laughs> he got spun around. Yeah, he did. Down there and, uh, goodness, coming out of the pile with some activity there was number 17. For the Trojans, Cartez Simon. Yeah, that line judge, he pointed with his left hand to start out. <laughs> <laughs> and then seven cameras on is, is saying, look, you pointed our way. The Trojans <laughs> can go over the top right here and get something big. All of a sudden, we got a ball game. Got to finish this drive off and get this thing within two scores. It hasn't been within two scores in a long time. No, it hasn't. 20 point deficit for the Trojans. They've scored on a couple of them here concurrent or consecutively have an opportunity to go out and do something here. Jalen Johnson to the near side. 
He's joined out there by number 12, Marquise Butler. Three men to the near side, nobody to the top. Feaster, now that defense for Karen Crow back. Feaster looking to go over the top. He's got Jalen wide open. Jalen's got it. Oh, oh, and he drops it. Oh, nobody there. Oh, my goodness. There was nobody around on that one. And I think Feaster might have thrown it just a tad too late. You got to catch him going there. But Jalen Johnson has been able to run by. Oh, that's the one, that's the one that you needed. Jalen was wide open and in and out of the hands down around the 15-yard line. Hey, come on, big guy. Get that helmet back on. We're going to need you. We're that's gonna right. Need you. Washington and Mingo now to the near side. You're just uh, like Tech Mobile. You're running four verticals. Back deep to receive, or back to go. Feaster going over the top again. Now he's wide open. He got a man, and that's in and out of the hands. And oh, my goodness. Darius Washington had it off the fingertips and uh, went away. Chase Babineau down again with, I'm, I'm assuming it's cramps again. Assuming that's him on the coverage. Maybe not. Maybe that wasn't him. No. No. 20. Not Babineau. And uh, Coach Corville just beside himself and wondering how we don't have a guy. My goodness, they got an official's timeout on the floor. And, and so, Coach, you, you recognize the old Tecmo Bowls. You just drop your guy back as far as you could go and throw it over the top, and you're gonna, your man's going to come down with it. Well, I'll but tell you, <laughs> being an old Cowboys fan, that's the only time I would be the Houston Oilers because of you could, Warren you could Moon. run it with Warren Moon. You <laughs> Warren absolutely Moon could. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cramps are starting to hit. Looks like, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll check and see. We'll work. We wait. Uh, 25 is who it looks like. And that's Jeremy Lawrence, Jeremy Lawrence yeah. down cramped. And it's good to see the trainers out there, and he's just pushing those feet forward and that you know that those calves are cramping up. And if you up in age uh, like us, you, you realize you get you get one of those things. It'll wake you up out of a dead oh. sleep <laughs> quickly. <laughs> yeah, don't even realize you're stretching in your sleep, and then all of a sudden you wake up. Great thing is it is just cramps. I mean, I know just cramps is, is, is tough, but it's not, you know, anything structural. Coach, you had two shots wide open receivers, both of them off the fingertips. The one from Jalen bobbled around. He dropped it when he hit the ground. That one from EJ or Darius was unable to pull that one down. Yeah, and I mean, both of them, you know, the passes were, were, were on target, but they were, you know, it was, it was difficult catches. And, you know, you have to slow down on the first one. Third down and 10 now for Feaster. He brings Townsend in motion. Here comes that pressure. They set up the middle screen. Lindsey's boggling around, but they're going to call I don't know if we've got a hold or a roughing back there. But uh, we'll have to see. There's a penalty flag that came in. It's going to be holding against the Trojans. That's going to be declined, I've got to believe. And that'll make it fourth down and ten. But that brings the third quarter to an end. Third quarter is to an end. That will make it 39 to 19. The Trojans trail by three scores. We'll sort this out real quick, though. I don't think they – there's no way they take this penalty and give the Trojans another third down attempt as much as they've ran by their receivers. Why do you not bring up fourth down I guess on that? I guess he's thinking he's going to go for it. I guess he's thinking we're going to go for it. So if that's the case – Make it go back further. I get right. it. Uh, and put the pressure on. That'll do it for the third quarter play. It is going to be an exciting fourth quarter, but we'll do all of that when we come back. You're watching Ash Trojan Football on 446 Sports. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. Back to live action we go. Um, like they're going to, they do push them back. It'll make it third down again. Jalen Johnson, now keep this matchup. He's all the way to the near side. Mingo in the slot. But that defense is going to just pin their ears and come back after Feaster. you got to believe and not let them get on. It all started with a sketch on it. this way, and here comes the blitz off the opposite side. It's picked up well. Feaster steps up. He's going over the top. Double coverage now, and that pass not even remotely where it needed to be that'll bring up fourth down and uh you you're playing this thing to to win it you got to stay out there and 
that punt team will come out again. I'm not just not second guessing by any. Now that one was untimed, so we'll go around to the fourth quarter now. Take a quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds for the fourth quarter here from Karen Crow on 446 Sports. And we are back here at the Crow Dome, home of the Golden Bears. 12 minutes to go, and if anything was exciting, if these last 12 minutes were as exci last exciting as those last five. And remember, Karen Crow ground out the first 556 of it on that big drive that got them from 32 to 39. Yeah, yeah. Then you have, hold them to a three and out, and then you, you know, then you get the onside kick. So uh. Trojans on to punt this one. They. Uh, Scored, got the onside kick, and did nothing with it here. Johnny Martin back deep to receive. Remember, Ty Feaster is in there at quarterback, but I don't expect that the Trojans would do any sort of a fake down here. Second down, or fourth down and 22. Snap is back, kick is away from Feaster, and it's high and it's wobbly and not much distance. It's got to bounce, and it does, and the Trojans will let it continue to bounce, <clears throat> but not quite enough for the first down even, and it <laughs> falls at the 46-yard line, and that's where the Bears will go, and you just can ill afford to let them roll off a two- or three-minute drive or anything. You've got to get them three and out. Good to see Chance Babineau back in the game for this Karen Crow Bears team. Yeah, health-wise, not competitive-wise. <laughs> correct, correct, yeah. but health-wise, indeed. Yeah. Veer, veer, veer is coming. you got to believe that. I don't believe that they'll throw the ball to try to stop the clock or anything here. 35-20, to 20, Karen Crow won it last year. They lead this one 39-19. to 19. Trojans' brutal start to a season. Just it's a gauntlet of, of non-district games that they'll face. Back to the shotgun. Handoff goes right up the middle and grinding out. Four yards, maybe five, is number two, and that's Kashmir Batiste. And i got to believe that you'll see a lot of that young man on this drive as they try to, to milk off as much as they can off the clock and not give the Trojans an opportunity. Yeah, Ford with the tackle there, unfortunately. It took about three yards to get him down. Yeah, Elijah Nelson coming up a little, little lame with his right knee, so hopefully he can work through that. Babineau continues to look at the play clock. He'll get up there with 13 now and 12. Handoff goes to Batiste again, but he's met at the as soon as he gets the ball and gets across the line of scrimmage and is dropped down. Yeah, it looks like Nelson's knee's okay after right. <laughs> seeing that one there. But, uh, again, third down. The Trojans have got to do what they can to get Karen Crow off the field right here. If you're Karen Crow, you wind off 30 seconds. You snap it with about 10, 15 to go. And you, you can ill afford another fresh set of downs because that'll run a minimum of another couple of minutes. So you got the chance to get it with 10 minutes to go or about seven and a half minutes to go if you can get the next stop. Yeah. Babino back in the shotgun. He's got Baptiste flank to his right. Gets that line down. Play action quick and blown up in the backfield. It's complete, but big time work out there, and that is number 16. Jaden Lewis. Jaden Lewis coming up. We called his name so many times yeah. in that jamboree last week. Jaden Lewis, the junior defensive back, read it like he was in practice with the Bears this week. Excellent, excellent tackle. Loss of two there. I guess they gave him forward motion there, but hey, 10 minutes left. Well, probably, what, 9, 940 whenever the punt goes off. Let's clean it. Let's, let's catch it cleanly and and again, Batiste is, is there to punt, so always keep an eye on Chance. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, Chance Babineau down to six and five. Yeah, they're missing one. I and thought they're so. running somebody on late three and two, and not knowing where to go. It's going to be a false he start with him because yeah. he was moving. Back him up five. The only problem with that is that ran off a lot of time. But it won't start back, will it? That'll be a, okay, that's what I thought it would be. 
Yeah, because then I'd just take them and yeah. take them and take them. Yeah. We'll tell you, it looks like Karen Crow's starting to labor some. I mean, I know it's I know it's late, but I mean, it's, you know, this is where your mental, the mental errors start to happen. You know, Rocky got beat up a lot by Apollo Creed until he came down and tied yeah. it up there right at the at the end of the fight. So we'll see what uh, this, uh, if this Trojan defense is ready for this Herculean effort that they're going to have to pull off. They need three scores in the final nine and 35 and get it away from this ball control offense. They did it there with three and out. We'll see what the Trojans have. Ooh. High snap. Trojans back, unable to get to it. And fair catch is called for and made, complete down to the 20. Yeah, Darius Washington there. And look, Babineau not really running off. He's kind of lightly jogging. He's going to spend some time in the, in the, uh, the conditioning room in the Whirlpool. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. It'll be an ice bath for sure. So, but I'll tell you, um, seven, you know, Cameron Tepion, and, uh, and number nine, um, Austin Dyson. I mean, those guys, they have been on the field a lot. Yep. Number four, Joni Martin. I mean, so maybe this last 926, take advantage of some of those shots. But also, got to look at it going across the middle, too, not just all the way. Not You've got to get these big passes hitting, man, and motion comes around. Feaster rolling this way. The back oh, throw here we the other go. way. Lindsey's wide open. Here we go. And he's going to go to the house. There is nobody. Oh, that's a good, good motion. But that's going to take JT to the 20, 10. Five, no flags, touchdown Trojans, touchdown JT Lindsay. Give him 80 yards on that one, and my goodness, how electric was that? That was fun to watch. That was fun to watch. That's a, a play out of the, the playbook of Karen Crow as they rolled Feast with the near side, leaked out just alignment and JT Lindsay to the far side, and uh, the angle was not the correct one that was taken. Good effort by Brian Angel. But he was unable to get JT Lindsay, who houses it 39-25. You go for the uh, Trojans. Look like they're yeah they're lining up. They've yeah. got they've got is that mesh That's out mesh, there to yeah. kick that one. Yeah. So Trojans trail oh, we right a, now. We got a Karen Crow. Trojans trail by 14 now in this one. Trailed by 32 at one point. Trying to get this thing within 14. Brown on Jill Jr. coming, senior, coming off the field He's there. the one that tried to chase down yeah. JT right there and had a good angle on him, but JT put it into another uh, another speed, and that is a very big candidate for our Southern Air cool play of the game, but I still think there are a couple of more going on before this thing is over. 39-25, Trojans trying to get it within 13. They've got it to 14 now. Kick is up, and it's hammered back to the back. And it is up and it's good. 39-26. We'll take a break right here with them. Trojans trying to mount a magnificent comeback. Do they have it in them? We'll see when we come back. You're watching Ash Trojan Football on 446 Sports. First time can be overwhelming. Do you have enough coverage? Are you paying too much? Will someone be there for you when the unexpected happens? I'm Jason Hawk with Farm Bureau Insurance. You may think it's easier online, but why wait? We're here to help you make sure you're covered. When it comes to car insurance, we have the answers, and we may have rates that save you money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK or online at talktohawk.com and let us help you protect your biggest investments. 19-7 to run for the Trojans here. They've uh, they picked it up 39-26, to a two-score game for your Ash Trojans. They got the last onside kick they got. Scoring on big one-play drives is a way to get you there. And I'm telling you, you're hearing what's going on in the press box. They are struggling to get people out onto the field. Coach, I'm counting out now. What? Well, 11 out there, but uh, difficult to get them. And there may be a timeout. And this, look, if you've ever had a team, they will take a timeout on the kickoff. Timeout on the kickoff, that's a tough one to take. And uh, you see a lot of the coaches taking their hats and their, their headsets off and rubbing their heads and, this thing has gotten a lot closer than people thought. Yeah, yeah, they were, looks like 19, Lance Hayes, looks like, uh, looks like he's out right now. He's got his, the, the you know, on the, on the, no, I'm sorry. Okay, it was 18 here. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 18. Okay. 18 is Roland Bruno. Yeah. 
No, they were they were hollering for Hayes up here, so I'm just curious to know. I guess they might have been trying to get him on the field. Boy, if you uh, if you're watching this thing on tape delay in the morning, you're seeing a good <laughs> one here. Uh, how does the last 908 play out? Heck, I don't know, but partner, it's a fun time to be up here. Yeah, Trojans really bring Van Dyke out again, and he thought he had back-to-back -back onside kick recoveries. Had one up the middle, one to the side. What does he do with it here? We think he had two onside kick recoveries. That's right. As he. Well. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do. I, maybe right. not you, but I, I, I sure did feel like I can't see that far anyway. Yeah, well, it looked like it looked like it, it, it looked like Blackwell came up with the ball. Now he might have he might have took it after, but ten men within uh, that first line by ten yards, and here comes Van Dyke. We'll see what he does with it. He onside kicks it again. It was hit. Oh before yeah. It got oh. To, it was hit before it got to ten yards. It's going to be an illegal touch yeah. by about a yard, and uh, the Trojans up guy got it right before it hit the 10. So it's going to be a illegal touch or false start. So the ball should go over to Karen Crow there. Yeah. And I mean, didn't need to touch it because I, nobody yeah. was close to it. The entire line from Karen Crow had backed up away from it. Well, it looked like that. It looked like the guys in front were trying to get in front of the ball to block the, the block Karen for the Crow. middle. That's guys. right. So the, so the kicker could get it and it just bounced into his stomach. It looked like, uh, I mean, you were inches away. Yeah. And they, look, that's one of those they could have picked up and housed. Yes. Because everybody from that front line was moving back. Nobody wanted to go get it. And they'll mark it two yards, two yards shy. So it'll start at the 48-yard line. You know, one, go ahead. One thing I noticed is they have switched. And I don't know if that's normal. But the side judge from the first half is on the yes, other side sides. now. And maybe that's maybe uh, that's something I'll look at next week to see if that's you know normal. But I mean, we had our questions to say the least on the on the guy that was on this side earlier. Here comes that Karen Crow methodical offense. We'll see if the Trojan can force another three. Or on this side of the field, it's going to need to be a four and out. Babineau under center, going to see that veer a lot tonight. Look like they got to moving a little bit earlier. There's a stop. But uh, the legs don't stop. That's a three-yard pickup down to the 45-yard line. Trojans are now fighting the clock. But, Coach, if you can get it, find a way to get it within one score. Dead gummit, anything can happen. Yeah, you know, I will, I will say this. They've been running the ball. Just hope they don't try to pop one here over the top because we're, we're playing downhill. We're aggressive, and we're doing well. And, again, the matchup to watch is to the near side. That's Austin yeah. Dyson. He can go up and get one with the best of them. It's harder to throw that ball out of the veer. 15 and 14. Yeah. Gains here on him. Second down and seven from the 44-yard line go the Bears. Handoff comes back to this side, and he's getting the edge before he's driven out of bounds. Well, no, they say that he was down inside, and that was complete to Kashmir Batiste. And the Trojans cannot, cannot give up first downs here. They've got to make a stop, and you're dangerously close from uh, – Getting down into a scoring situation for Karen Crow. Yeah, Blackwell on the tackle there. He's up to unofficial 10 tackles for the game. 39-26. Karen Crow leads this one. 8.04 remaining in this one. Karen Crow fatigued to say the least. 13 seconds on the play clock. It's first and 10 from the 34-yard line. Now the handoff goes to the fullback. That's Batiste. Stands around, boy, the Trojans hold him up trying to get that ball back. Yeah. And again, it'll be down around the seven-minute mark before they have to snap the ball away. But I'm telling you, the Trojans get the ball back in their hands. They're able to score anywhere on the field that they want to because that defense of Karen Crow is worn out. Yeah, and you talked earlier in the first half about just a, a game of inches. I mean, that onside kick is just, that's the third play that, and of course, I know the Karen Crow's had some that have been close as well, but just that's the way the ball bounces, unfortunately. Second down and seven from the Trojans. 30-yard line, go the Bears. A little confusion here on the Trojans. Trojans are all within. Look at that defensive line. It comes up to play the veer. Handoff goes there, and a good stop to the near side. They'll give him three yards. Again, it'll be third down and three, and this is that uh, three yards and a cloud of dust. Yeah, Landon Norris there on the carry, and looks like uh, White with the tackle. The yes, Trojans can find a way to get it back with about five and a half, get some sort of quick score. You've got an opportunity, perhaps, to do something. We saw this against Acadiana in 2020. We saw it against St. Thomas Moore a year ago. The Trojans have the ability to come back in games like this. Yeah, it's 
character. They're definitely they haven't stopped. They haven't they haven't quit fighting. Six twenty eight remaining. Third down and three from the twenty seven yard line. Keeper. Yep. Babineau is going to keep it himself. He's got to get to the twenty two, and it looks like he may have it. He does by a yard. First down. That'll reset the clock. And every time you do that, it runs off a couple of minutes off of the clock, and that just uh, can ill afford to give up the the first downs, and that's a couple of them back to back. Five, uh, five minutes or under five, under six minutes to go here. We're going to get that hydration timeout with six minutes to go. 39-26, Karen Crow's marching. They've got the lead, two scores. We'll be back on 446 Sports. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates. Back for the final six minutes of this one. And uh, Karen Crow, first down and 10 from the Trojan 20. Gosh, give him the 24-yard line is where he needed to be, and he just got about a yard over it, so he needed the 25, got the 24 Six minutes, and at that time, you're, you're happy for that hydration timeout. The Trojans still have all three of theirs here, so uh, you have to see if they're going to need to use them up on this next uh, next little bit of a drive. You know, Karen Crow, the clock has stopped, but they still take it down. Yeah, It still worked the clock to make sure that everything stays the same. Yeah, routine for sure. Handoff goes to the far side and just pushing those Trojan defenders back for five-yard pickup. And uh, that should get you down close to five minutes in this one. If you got a little stop there, you might could have took a timeout if you were the Trojans. You've got to do what you can to get it to just one score because that puts all the pressure on this offense of Karen Crow. Yeah, yeah right with the tackle there. Second down and four, six-yard pickup. You can ill afford to continue to give up five and six-yard chunks running the football. You know, this looks like the old Michigan in the – 80s and 90s where they'd pull both guards and just have enough misdirection to, to get that. 5-19, second down. Handoff goes up the middle. Stopped, but uh, the ball, not ball, ball. Gets, He's got the ball. Yeah, forward progress got uh. him stopped, got him marked. And uh, very near the first and may have it from what I'm looking at. That veer has just been dominant. Third down and about half a yard, 4.55 to go and counting. Blackwell and Ford on the tackle there. 39-26, 4.46 to go in the fourth quarter. Karen Crow with a big lead, and they've got a chance here to maybe salt this one away at third down and one. They are just uh, leaning on the Trojans on this drive after the Trojans put up a couple of big touchdowns. Handoff goes to the fullback up the middle. He's going to get the first man. First man through gets it, and that's going to be first down. Yeah, 427 is where they get it now, and the ball looks like it's going to be inside the 10. Aiden Walker on your tackle there, unassisted. First down and go. You know that Karen Crow wants to go in there and push this other touchdown in. Goodness, what a flurry it's been by the Trojans. We saw them do it against Washita last year and come back and just come up empty. Saw him against St. Thomas Moore and just come up empty. Trojans uh, need a big stop, a turnover, something to happen right here. Chance Baptiste has come in like a warrior and battled. Pulls the ball back, and now he's going to try to get into the end zone, and that's Chance Baptiste doing what he does. And uh, that, that young man, I'm going to tell you, is going to be a star to come out of here that they've not seen perhaps since a, a Kevin Falk. I tell you that, that's impressive. That's impressive. And, and he's limping. He's limping through the through the back of the end zone. He's uh, played 87 downs in this yeah. uh, in this game. 
45 to 26. Trojans will need three scores again in under four minutes. He might not be able to get up from from the hold, from the hold, Doug. If he no, let that uh, let that young man uh, yeah. play him some uh, some some whatever these kids get. Play him some PlayStation Five or something <laughs> in the morning, and, and no field, no practice tomorrow for him. Blanchard on to see if he can do back-to-back -back PATs. That one is up, and it's good. And you're right, Babineau struggling to get up out of holding it. 46-26. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're watching Ash Trojan Football on 446 Sports. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially? Karen Crow back there, and uh, look, there have been a, a host of candidates for the cool play of the game. If if we gave the play of the game, and we'll we'll announce that Sunday on our Coach Speak show from out at Quibitos, that'll be the Quibitos play of the game. We're not giving it to an opposing team, but uh, there would be no discussion of who got it. Uh, it would be. Uh, Ch Chance Babano. Yeah, for sure. We'll see what they call here. Looks like he started before the whistle was, before it was whistled, set to go. Now he'll walk off his own penalty. You know, there's fatigue in the, in the, in the, <laughs> the official. but the kicker sets it up himself, so we'll give him that. But if you get to mark off your own penalty, that's just really cool. Well, let's make something electric happen here, Trojans. And why don't we house this one? Yeah. You know, if you're Karen Crow, you onside kick it. Oh, gosh. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, Babineau's not kicking off. Right. <laughs> and there's a squib that's going to roll around and be picked up by Jalen, his first opportunity to run one back. Stutter steps to get to the hole now, getting to the outside. Goes Jalen. Jalen down to the 45-yard line. He goes, and the Trojans are in scoring distance once again. Remember, Trojans have all three of their timeouts. You got to get a quick one here. You got to get the onside kick. Got to get the ball back. Score it. Oh, my goodness. I'm orchestrating. Did I tell you, Coach? It's going to be 47 46 final in this one. <laughs> I'll take it again. I'm, I'm pushing this I'll thing take up. It again. Those that, uh, I'm telling you what, our viewership in the morning when we go live, would, uh, when we tape delay this thing, would be phenomenal, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you something else, too. Uh, you know, Jalen bouncing back, you know, and, and fighting to the end here. Yep. And look, I'm telling you, you had a shot at that one. Here comes my my in motion. Had that one-handed snag earlier. Oh, we got, and look oh, back to throw. They got Mingo wide open. Got to come back and get that, and it's picked off. And who do you think that is? Austin Dyson. And uh, you think starting to get a little chippy now as that ball was thrown and picked off. And uh, Mingo, it was just thrown short. Yeah. So Dyson was able to go back and uh, suck that one up. Like that you saw what I did there, Dyson? Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. just making yeah. sure. Yeah, 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 I got yeah. it. I'm there. I'm, that's I'm, a Chuckism. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that is. Well, and that's a that's one of those examples of, you know, you're trying to make something happen. He's open, throws a little late because it's obviously not your starting quarterback that makes the throw, and, and Dyson made a great play coming back so the on it. So the story on Dyson, we talked, uh, talked to his dad this evening, his first-year PA announcer for them, uh, his first year doing PA up here, and Dyson played – Defense last year for this, this Karen Crow team moved over to the receiver side when Chance Babineau moved to quarterback. Wow. Hand off to the far side and brought down Martin, the ball carrier, and uh, had a lot of excitement out of that last little flurry right there, but I think it's uh, going to put a wrap on this when you start looking ahead to the Trojans' opponent. Still going to be a fun one to go back and watch in the morning when this thing is tape delayed and and aired. We'll we'll go back and watch this thing and 
check everything out that we did wrong. And I know there was a bunch of it. We'll get better for next week. But we're glad to the over 1,000 subscribers that sit back and watch high school football on Friday nights with us. Pineville hanging on to a one-score lead with about three minutes to go in their ball game. Buckeye victorious tonight in a big way. Congratulations, Ben McLaughlin and that group. Right up the middle, and now you're just uh, you're running some clock. And temper starting to flare just a little bit, and they go out and they get Aiden Walker. You don't want to get your guy thrown out of a game in this one uh, this late in it. Yeah, for sure. Need him next week. You know, let's stay calm. That way you're in the game next week. Good job by Bachman and, and that group to realize it, too. Just a couple of minutes to go down three scores, not not calling the timeouts. Can't say that they won't if they get a stop right here. <clears throat> but it'll be under two minutes when this ball is snapped. And Chance Babineau, Chance Babineau, Chance Babineau, remember that name. It's going to be special. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked he's in the game after he could barely get up from the hold in the last PAT. Oh, and he's running. Here we go. Oh, gosh. Oh, <laughs> I don't gosh. know. And, look, just gets to the sideline, runs out of bounds, and goes says hi to some of the other Trojans that haven't quite seen him tonight. You go back there if you're Babino and take a knee. i got to believe it and get him out of there, although might not be able to get up from it. <laughs> when we are here, to, when we're done tonight, we'll wrap things up again, our cool play of the game. You'll see that posted sometime tomorrow. We'll get that up and. And about, we'll announce our Quibitos player of the game. That will be Sunday night during our Coach Speak segment. We'll get all of our play-by-play -play guys together and talk about their games, their wins and losses, and what's going ahead in week two. Out, coming out and throwing the ball is Babineau. And he says, you know what, I can do this too. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm shocked by that as well. Raylan Hall on the tackle there with the help of uh, Aiden Walker. That was surprising to me. But... It worked. Again, we appreciate all of you that tuned in to our audio broadcast of it. It's like the good old days of radio, second down and six. But, uh, you know, you follow the rules in the, the schools that you go to. And we're just glad we got to be inside after that miscommunication that was down there a little bit earlier. Yeah. Minute seven to go in the ball game. Batiste gets it, and he's going to make his way out. And somebody's going to end up getting hurt or thrown out of this one. i got to think you do your best to, to take a knee. 54 seconds, 35 on the play clock. Yeah, Jaden Lewis on the tackle there, come up from free, free safety position. Mind all of you to check this one out in the morning if you're still here listening. If you watched it via YouTube, I invite you to go and subscribe. Went over 1,000 subscribers this weekend. And. And then we'll take that, and then we'll mark that down, day down to September the 1st, 2023. Trojans will fall to 0-1 on the season. Karen Crow picks up right where they left off. They start the season at 1-0. They're ranked ninth and ranked ninth for a reason. They really are dominant. So the yep, they redid the clock so they would get it out of here. That's going to wrap things up. You'll see them shake hands out there. We're going to take our final break of the night. We'll take a minute commercial, then we'll come back and recap things. And we'll do it in one minute on 446 Sports for the Trojan Wrap-Up Show. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk-On. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Is your vision just not as crisp and clear as it used to be? Are you having difficulty driving, especially at night? Are you over 40 and now needing reading glasses? If so, the trusted eye care team at Wallace Eye Associates is here to help with your family's eye care needs, just like we have been for nearly 40 years. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation.
all started with a sketch on a napkin. And the top ten has phenomenal, well coached, phenomenal athletes. And but I'm looking at these athletes as they come off the field. They're coming over to sing the alma mater, which is is great. But I mean, look at the cramp and the limping off that they did. These warriors battled tonight. Yeah, for sure. Um, and just to just to see, you know how how number seven, you know how how you know the um, Cameron Cibrian, how he you know kept battling, and, and then Baptiste, the number two, the running back, and then number four, Joni Martin, played everywhere as well. And it, it, Dyson, you said last just year just over was, and over and over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said last year he was a, a DB only, and and he threw a pass tonight, a <laughs> seventy yard pass. Threw a pass, pass. got an interception as <laughs> yeah. well, and then caught a big ball. Over here. So, uh, yeah, what a night it's been for everybody, uh, both sides. Explosive for the Trojans. We'll dissect and cut through and come up with our Southern Air heating and cooling. Cool play of the game. You'll see that this weekend. Also, we'll name our Quibitos player of the game. We want a big shout-out to the folks at Polos and Plaids that were able to outfit us tonight and, and certainly grateful for that. These things are, are nice. You need to go check it out. Uh, it's Polos and Plaids there in Alexandria, just uh, next to Papa John's, I guess, in that shopping center that's off to the right of it, to the left side of Max, off of Jackson Street. All your uniform needs, go by and see Michelle and the group at Polos and Plaids. Couldn't do anything without all of our sponsors. Our next broadcast will be Sunday night. It'll be at 5 o'clock. We're going to bump it up so that we can get back and watch that LSU-Florida State game as well. But that's going to wrap it up here for us. Uh, Chuck made the trip up with us, and, and, and we appreciate that. Had Tioga in their big win last night uh, on that one over Bolton. Sorry, Coach. That's just uh, that's the way that goes. Yeah. So for uh, Chuck Perkins, my man on production, Brett Stalsby, my partner Nick Magnano, I am Doug Gann. We'll see you next week. God bless you all, and good night. It all started with a sketch on a napkin.